Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday and happy Welcome Back Masks Day. Uh, we are here to revisit the uh, shared Teen Justice Academy universe, uh, which keeps growing with spinoffs and new characters and things like that. And uh, this time we are handing the reins over to the delightful 98 Tough Love to tell us a little story of, um, I'm sure, intrigue and woe. So, yay, Tough, uh, introduce yourself and tell us what's about to happen. And then we'll All go right. Around. Cool. Well, I am 98 Tough Love or Tough Retort for Tour for Twitter, some other variety of nickname. I am also kind of a variety streamer on Twitch. It's been a while. One day I'll get better internet and then I can stream again. Uh, until then, you'll usually catch me here. And today we'll be taking the heroes on a nice little interdimensional journey. So we will see how that goes and cause all sorts of happiness and rainbows and no trauma whatsoever because that never happens to this group. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, SJ. All right, I am SJ, we're SJ underscore sidekick. I will be playing Deadlock, who is the protege. She has the ability of power mimicry, so anything you can do, she can do. Uh, putting them at an impasse or deadlock, which is her name now. Did I say impasse or did I say deadlock? Anyway, I'm deadlock now. Same person, different name. <laughs> Going through a bit of a rebellious phase. <laughs> Go ahead, Zoe. Zodi. Zodi. Hi. Yeah, introduce yourself. yourself. And your character. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hear SJ say my name. It just, like, it randomly cut out. So, hi, I'm the original Zodi. Um, I play Fade. I don't stream anymore. Um, I just hang out with these guys when they ping me in Discord and, like, hey, hey, are we, we playing Masks? And I'm just like, yeah, we're playing Masks. Um, uh, Fade, um, was originally someone. I can't remember her name. Um. Paradigm. Uh, oh, yeah, Paradigm. Uh, <laughs> It's been a minute. Um, she ended up in uh, Aegis control, and uh, because she she kind of broke and and lost her stuff, and um, they were like, no, this is unacceptable. And now she's trying to gain back the uh, the trust of her friends. And last I checked, it was it was going kind of okay, but not really. Um. Yeah, so Richie, over to you and your, your new office. I'm Richie H. Um, I've been AFK for a long time. <laughs> Still kind of AFK. Sometime I'll get back. Um, I'm deeply upset that Angela Lansbury has died. Um, and I need to do a monster she wrote um, as dedication yes. to that zero. Yes. Um, <laughs> I am playing Residence, who is also known as Lala or Isla, and she is the star. She's also a celebrity um, and controls like sound and electricity. And that is me. Over to Misha. Hi, I'm Misha underscore less than three on Twitch or at Misha Way on Twitter. I play Tilder or Tilly, who is the newborn playbook. She's a robot. Uh, with an alien AI, uh, can now eat food, an exciting new development for her. Uh, she missed a lot of teen drama, was really confused why the whole team broke up, but they're all together now. They got a new base. It's over uh, a cat sanctuary, so that's pretty exciting uh, for her. And I think that kind of covers it. She's doing, she's doing good, except for like the three conditions I've checked, but don't worry about that. Uh, you can up probably to... clear those. <laughs> okay, <laughs> up to zero. Uh, yep, yeah. and I am uh, Michael, or Zero, or Zero Daylight. Um, and yes, I am here sometimes. And I am playing Squee, uh, who those of you who watched our Rogue Stars one shot uh, will recognize as a cute little puppy kitty. With little glowing, really glowing ears and little tentacles. He's a little alien puppy kitty who is very sweet and lovable. Never, ever did anything wrong, ever. Just never, ask anybody who meets him. <laughs> yeah, never started an intergalactic, intergalactic war or uh, ate an entire peace conference. 
No. No, that'd be ridiculous. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell us about Squee before we, like, jump into stuff? Uh, he is the Outsider Playbook. Uh, he has a, a vehicle, which is how he... Uh, it's a it's a little egg pod thing. Uh, although it, you know, transforms and gets weird. Um, and, uh, he knows lots about technology and he transforms. He can fly, of course, nearly indestructible. Uh, and he can transform his body in all kinds of ways, including popping out alien weapons and eating any amount of anything. And then eventually, eventually it has to come out, but that's a whole other situation. You'll yeah. see, you'll know because he'll get that look on his face and start like stamping his paws and walking around in a car. And you'll just no, need to know to take him out. Yeah. Other than that, he's fine. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So, opening up, we're going to see, open the first page, and you kind of see it's like somebody took a bunch of Polaroid pictures and it's kind of just dumped them on the floor. So there's scenes from the first issue when you guys were fighting the Steel Swarm, going to space in a rocket ship. There's scenes from the second one with everybody in the hamster ball rolling down downtown and fighting the fear monster and, you know, super cool superhero action stuff. Then there's the third issue with, you know, Town Hall being sucked into a strange interdimensional space and fighting those guys resonance with the electric knives and then we see the aftermath of the explosion at the impound we have pictures of everyone leaving the building we have fade getting escorted out by aegis and it kind of pans up and we see that girl that we left off with last time she's got bright green hair and she just is like rubbing her hands together and she looks ecstatic and then we turn the page and let's catch up with you guys so it's been probably about three to five days since you guys got back from dr darwin's island and since squee arrived and specter has gone off and made an emotional exploration journey around the world uh so just kind of find out where you guys are at. How have you reacted to Squee being here? And we'll go from there. So let's start with Deadlock again and see where you're at. So at the end of last issue, uh, Deadlock got paid because she took the money so she could make her own little not as great headquarters as they had before, but, you know, something to work out of. Uh, she wants to kind of strike out on her own a little bit without impact and everything and feels better with the team, but maybe not completely. Um, there's still some, you know, tension there. Um, so wait, we've met Squee already? I've had a couple of days since Squee has landed. Yeah. So. Slash crash through the roof of your other secret hideout above the Kitty Cat Club. And not yeah, assuming you got uh, frantic uh, texts from Fade about there being an yeah. alien in your new yep. headquarters. I, can, okay. can I have some clarification? Why, uh, wasn't specifically why is there an egg? It came through the roof um, of the, the renamed Kitty Cat Cafe. <laughs> um, adopt or chop. That's, that's, that's the notes that I have. Um, <laughs> and then we were waiting to figure out what was going on and why he was there. That's that's what I have for my notes, or, or what was in the egg. So we haven't completely and fully met Squee yet. You have. It's been a couple of days. Yeah, okay. so we're just kind of recapping, yeah. like, really quick. Yeah, Rach. So, so uh, hadn't we decided that that was where Deadlock was living and the rest of us, like, what off at the place? No, I think Deadlock got her own apartment. Deadlock's in a little one bedroom. Yeah. Right. Um, and right. Then, okay. And you guys are all staying with your moms and dads and stuff. Yeah, because I was back at my old house. Okay. Yeah. That's all yeah. I okay. Fade, yeah. Fade is is legally mandated to stay with her parents. Foster parents. Yeah. Foster parents. Um, yeah. But, but she's it, but she's you're maintaining the, yeah. 
Yeah, maintaining yeah. The, the the super's base. The official um, the officials hang out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Deadlock does have a nice new costume though that actually matches her name new name now. Oh. Okay, she's able cool. to buy that. <laughs> Made her own new helmet and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so for purposes of just having you all in one place, I'm going to say that you're all still meeting up at the Kitty Cat Cafe in your new headquarters today. Um, maybe just having like a group hangout, trying to rebond as a team after all of the division and everything. So maybe just like go trying to do a new weekly occurrence of everybody meeting up and hanging out for a few hours. So we've got Deadlock was getting set up in her new apartment, new costume. Cool. Uh, Bay, what have you been doing? Um, becoming a crazy cat lady, posting lots of cute cat pictures on um, the the superhero version of, of TikTok. I found the entirety of your text between you and Val right now is a picture of a cat picture, and then a million heart eyes, and then another cat picture, and then a million yes. eyes. Yes, absolutely, yeah. 100%. That's what it is. Fate is trying to, you know, win, win Val back. With friendship cat. wise, with <laughs> cat pictures, and it is going surprisingly well. Um, but yeah, there's there's lots of like social media. She's she's become essentially the the crazy cat lady at you know the tender age of sixteen. So um, beyond that, um, I suppose Gui is staying in the base. Of course, um, you know she's kind of looking after puppy kitty and there's lots of yarn balls and lots of toys there's nothing with catnip because we don't need that level of crazy yet um have you attempted to take a photograph of squee and share it in your primitive social media um probably but only to go to you're gonna need a new phone okay well <laughs> you just will obviously supply that um, <laughs> new phone, who dis? <laughs> and, and so, um, you know, she's she's just realizing, okay, it's 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 going to eat everything and anything if I attempt to take a picture of it. Uh, and it's going to stay upstairs, not downstairs, away from the cute and fluffies. Yes, Squee does not like and the cats. At it's least, not, I, I mean, at, at first, he thinks of them as potential warriors to recruit. But then when he realized that they're more interested in licking themselves and chasing toys, he... Yeah, they're not exactly... Yeah, they are... They are no, they're, they're yeah, not was, warrior material. There was also possibly a time where she busted out a laser pointer just to see what would happen with Squee. Uh, he... A massive uh, xenobiomechanical laser gun pops out of his back and blasts a hole in the wall. Good. New window. Yeah. It's like a, a, a rules list <laughs> on the wall of what you can and can't do with Squee that just gets updated yes. like every five minutes as Spade experiments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But... Absolutely. <laughs> No laser pointers, no catnip, no, no, yeah, no pictures. pictures, no catnip, no laser, and it like just keeps going. Like you had to tack on several pieces of paper, and it's like trailing onto the floor. Yeah. yeah. Yes. You're probably starting to realize that when Squee is being very cutesy, that that's when it's danger. Oh, um, good. It's like yeah. it's like his social signals are backward, so he gets very cutesy when he's about to do danger things oh, and when he seems kind of rare, it's when he's relaxed yeah well because in his he's... culture he is a he is a great and renowned and very dangerous warrior a galactic threat it's just that in his culture all the things that they do to signal that threat are interpreted on earth as cuteness good perfect and i yeah, think quite like um i am 98 percent certain that's like rule number two do not touch the belly you can touch it from the inside. Yeah. 
No, we're good. We don't do four. <laughs> Perfectly content. We don't we don't pet the belly. Nope, they just don't don't touch. It's, uh, it's little pets. No, that's right great. So Fade, I head. think Aegis has named you as Squeeze Temporary like Watcher. Not oh, necessarily good. like guardian, but since you're the one that has a headquarters at the cat cafe and tends to stay there i think you've been granted leave from having to like constantly be at your foster parents home you still have to check in but you're not having to like sleep over there every night and as long as your grades maintain they're not gonna bug you to come back so they can stare over your shoulder while you study so uh oh, wow. Yeah, so you who studies paid doesn't study, she either knows it or she doesn't. <laughs> yeah, which is why they're okay with this. Um, yeah. so I think that, that is your new temporary arrangement, assuming that nothing else goes wrong, which it definitely won't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> okay. not leave him alone for endless hours. Um, and she won't let him outside, not yet, at least. Well, you might need to let him outside occasionally when the whole paw stamping starts to happen. I think that's another one of the rules, is that you have to let Squee out when that starts happening, because you had to deep clean the entire space okay. so, when so, you didn't so let him out. I, is, is, you thought a litter box would be enough? It was not. <laughs> is, it was is, absolutely not. <laughs> is, is Squee accepting of, like, you know, a cute little, sorry, a vicious looking spiky little harness and leash for him because she's not going to go outside with him not on a leash. <laughs> no, he would he would prefer what you would interpret as cute. Because again, what you think is cute okay. to him is a demonstration of prowess and danger. Yeah, you just have to present it as like super awesome battle armor. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's, it's definitely super awesome battle armor it's it's super precious thin and it's like it's like looking at something one of like the big biker dudes they would have on their little pomeranian yes perfect all right so that's what fate's doing uh what about you guys what have you been up to not that brave misha um Resonance has been having to do lots of public appearances with Cody, and she's yeah. exhausted by it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, because so, we went away to the island, I was made to catch up. Yeah, yeah, because you did have a brief downtime while the the villain stuff was happening. Yeah. Throw that full so, ass boy in the trash. So yeah, I'm not in the mood. Because I've had to be faking this toxic, horrible relationship for yes. the last five days. So I don't really know what's going on. I more walk in with like a drink and I'm like looking at this list just like. <laughs> I mean, for, for your friends and for Halcyon City, this is one of the least weird things that could probably be happening. Yeah, so that's why I've decided to come because I've said, oh, I'm really sorry, I can't. I've got a prior arrangement. Uh, so you could get out of yeah publicity. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you had superhero stuff you had to do, so it was very yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, perfect. Uh, what about you, Tilly? Tilly has been practicing her culinary skills. Now that she can consume food, cooking has taken a much greater interest in her time. She has pressed JJ for all of yeah. her recipes, <laughs> anything can actually, most likely, I think that she can do most of the uh, physical skills of cooking, like, entirely precise. So everything turns out fine, but it's not quite the same. So there's been a lot of, like, try this. Why is it different? Let me get the, the evaluation and see how much human error I need to apply <laughs> to this recipe in order to make it taste correct. Yeah, I think JJ is having a hard time explaining to you, like, well, I don't do, like, an exact measurement of spice. You just add it until it tastes good, but I don't know like, how much that is, and, like, mm -hmm. quantifying it is difficult, so it's... And, like, and I'm sure there was a time where, like, Tilly was, like, there taking notes and observing. It's like, I see, 0.87. Last time it was point. 
1.81. The time before that, it was 1.02. So I don't understand how much is supposed to be going. And JJ's just like, don't measure with your heart. <laughs> yeah, measure you with your heart. Your heart bounces. <laughs> you measure until your ancestors whisper, stop. <laughs> yeah exactly I i'm all like well that's going to be complicated maybe like pushing you towards baking a little bit more since that tends to need more precision than like normal cooking uh so maybe you were over at her house this morning and are bringing some snacks to the friend yes. meetup because that's what humans do to yes we bring the snacks i have cookies cupcakes actual cake Mm. And then, like, and... a gluten-free variety and, like, a yes. just making sure that everybody who shows up can potentially have something. Yes. And kitty snacks. Sugar-free. Kitty snacks, also homemade. Yes. It's just fish. It's just fish. <laughs> <laughs> the adorable chopped-up fish. Perfect. All right. And how is Squeep at adjusting to life on Earth? Um, not enough battle. We can fix that. Yes. <laughs> I think he. I think he spends. I, I, he spends his time uh, in his in his craft um, because, unfortunately, one of the weaknesses is that the multi-dimensional drive is broken, and he is uh, very upset that uh, his um, servant, Fade, is. Uh, he's very pleased to have a servant, but he's very mm. upset that his servant Fade is. Uh, so scientifically incompetent that she cannot supply him with the requisite extremely unusual materials to repair his multidimensional drive. Right. They, they've got they've gotten in many yes they've gotten in many okay. many arguments uh, which are mostly him just staring at her and purring. It's taken some time for the two of you to understand each other a little bit. I think there's still a lot of miscommunication because Fade's still kind of, oh, whenever you start doing that. Yes. Uh, but we're getting there. It has been added to the list that, like, be wary of cuteness is is a big one. Like, bolded, and, and highlighted, I, I noted, I, I noted the mm sound that you had made um, when, when cupcakes were mentioned. No sugar is also on that list. Yes. I feel like that would be a bad thing. And given that you're supposed to be like an animal-ish creature, sugar is bad. Chocolate would be deadly. No, thank you. And then as soon as Tilly walks in, like the entirety of it is just Yeah, so look, yeah, like here the full take is just like bloop. Yeah, right on, gone. right in the sweet. <laughs> you all, you all blink and look away for two seconds. Oh, and then Tilly like says, ah, and then the mouth opens back up, and it's all in there. And he gently spits it out. <laughs> like, lays it. He, re he, re oh, he respects. He, he definitely he respects Tilly. Teaching. Oh, good. Perfect. All right, cool. So we see like little snapshots, kind of just catching us up with what everybody's been doing. So we see Deadlock's new apartment, the new costume. We see. Fade running around with Squee, uh, scrubbing down the apartment, writing down things on the list. We see Resonance looking less than pleased after a couple of photo shoots with Cody, and then walking in being like, oh, uh, never mind, and then joining everybody, Tilly and her various cooking escapades with JJ, who just seems happy to have somebody there. Uh, and bringing in all of the stacks for everybody, and then we see Squee inside of the little spaceship and working on the multidimensional rift, fighting with Fade, and kind of just generally getting settled as you are currently stuck on the planet. And Spectre is... Spectre is somewhere in East Coast United States, or not East Coast, West Coast United States, uh, having a nice vacation on the beach. So, uh, all right, so you have all met up at the Cat Cafe. Um, all of the snacks have been graciously returned by Squee. So, you're all sitting down and kind of just chatting, maybe not quite as lively. Some people are a little more excited to be here than others. Some people are a little less exhausted than others. Uh, and... 
Deadlock, Fade, Resonance, and Tilly, you all get a chime on your phones. And it's a leftover security alert from the impound. A leftover? Yeah, almost like you'd think that it was like delayed, but there's like timestamp you can look into it and it's recent. Okay. I'll probably send a message to the group chat. Like, is anybody in the cafe right now? At the yeah, base you're, right now? You're all, you're you're all in the, I think you are. Oh, we're all, all in. All, yeah, you're all in the base. You all get the chime at the same time. I didn't think any of those systems were still functional there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that I broke everything. There's another chime. Same alert. Uh, could be acting up, but should probably check just in case. Tilly, can you check to see if it's, like, just on the fritz, or? Yes. Why don't you roll to unleash your powers for me there, Tilly? <laughs> <laughs> Character, I can definitely do that, GM. Can you, though? Yeah. Uh, what do you know? <laughs> what do you know about it, me? What? Where am I at with my powers? What is Unleashed Power at is again? Uh, freak. Freak. All right, uh, I got a seven. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say that this is unstable, because as you're trying to trace this, it's like your systems can't track it. It's like there's a fritz. Or like it. Your systems are trying to tell you it doesn't exist, but also it does, but then it doesn't, and it's not working. It's like it's glitched. Mm, it's paradoxical. Yes. Cool. Helpful. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh... Are we going to have to physically go there and see what's going on? Or here. No, this is the old base. It's yeah, the old, the base. old base. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not From the Kitty Cat Cafe. Cafe. It's that's, that's, what I was, that's what I was confused on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, old base. I think it would be prudent to look at it. I thought it was just a hole in the ground. Yes, this does lead to the question of what can send a device, uh, signal like that. Oh, Squee, would you like to go for walkies? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Fate's just gonna kind of look at Tilly and go you said the magic word yeah, yeah. outside no, we have to go <laughs> yeah, no, we have no choice we're going walkies <laughs> shall I bring my right. worship no toys stay in the house ah uh, for greater challenge I see. Yes. Yes, absolutely. For a greater challenge. Technically, it's a floofy and assault craft, but. Cool, 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 cool. So. We're walking there. It, it, here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Fade. <laughs> what if we did riot? Can we fit inside of your warship? Yes. Let's take the warship. As Are much as I love carrying mind? everybody across, I it's... love carrying everyone across town. I don't mind. However, Sir. there is a perfectly reasonable ship right here. Yes. Servant, it has chameleon plating. I've explained this to you multiple times. You've explained it multiple times, and every single time it goes in one ear and out the other. One might even think that your head is an empty extra-dimensional space like my stomach. Probably. Very well. Shall we retire to the roof? Sure. Yes, let's. Right. Trot really <laughs> cutely up the stairs as this little egg floats uh, into grab behind me. Okay. And Perfect. then, as soon as we I reach the roof, it turns this. into this this awful looking, just bristling with weapons and spikes and stuff. Just this very, like, 
super ultra 13 year old boy drawing a really cool super extra space fighter kind of thing it fades very calmly going to but it's pink and glittery look. yes of course yeah <laughs> fade is going to no to this is the disguise of, you know, this is so that it oh, looks this harmless oh. right kind of kind of lean back and just you know tell everybody listen don't say anything about the way it looks he gets offended by it pretty sure he gets offended by most things that come out of my mouth but saying it's cute is definitely one thing that will set him off it's vicious no oh, he right squee I do not listen to you. No, hold on. Hold on. I thought he he doesn't think this is vicious looking. Yeah, he, this one he this one's this cute. Is, to him, this is like normal. Yes, it's a good disguise. Yeah. No yeah. one will see us coming. Everyone Ooh. will see us coming. Well, it's fine. Yeah, People we'll, we'll in the city have seen worse. Yes. I so, should probably yeah. So mechanically. Here. Kirby Craft have strengths and weaknesses. Uh, its strengths are chameleon plating, powerful weaponry, and dimension drive, but broken. Its weaknesses are it is easily detectable and difficult to repair. The reason it's easily detectable, even though it has a chameleon plating, is that in his mind, making it large and ostentatious and threatening is the best way to disguise it. Perfect. All right. So are you all loading up into Squeeze Craft? Yes. There's more than sufficient room. Against my better judgment, yes. <laughs> yeah, good luck's kind of regretting not spending more time here <laughs> figuring out this yeah. situation. Tilder, would you be the co-pilot? Yes. Excellent. Right, so you all load up into the Kirby Craft and are heading to the impound. Um, when you arrive, it is still just a hole in the ground. It doesn't look like there's anything that's survived. It's no longer smoldering, at least, which is good. Uh, but it doesn't look any different than it did after... Fade, then Paradigm destroyed it. So what do you do? It appears we have missed the battle. Yeah, I'm going to chalk this one up to uh, weird Fade powers, former Paradigm powers, making things all weird. Mm. Um, I don't think there's Fade's, nothing here. Fade's power Fade's, set didn't have it's any... Just, it, it's probably going to be like the first time um, since the episode happened, uh, that Fade has been back. So she's going to be remarkably quiet. Yeah, I don't think technology interference is in particular one of Fade's powers at the time. Um, let's just do a quick search around, look for any signals. And see if we can maybe there was something underground. Should we scan for threats? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh look, I found a bit of the coffee maker. Fade <laughs> <laughs> yeah. bursts into tears. <laughs> Most tragic loss. With, with like a, a, gl a glitching mini mini ash. Would you like sprinkles with that? Would you like sprinkles yeah. with that? Would you like sprinkles with that? <laughs> Please let me die. Please let me die. <laughs> I'm like, Tilly, turn Anthony. this off. <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> Just like my Tamagotchi all over again. <laughs> all right. So are we, what, what are you guys doing? Are something about scans, checking out the spot, who's doing what? I will scan. Um, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll to assess the situation. Ah, excellent. Uh, uh, superior. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that is going to be a red hot six. Oof. 
get your... I think you're starting to think that... Because are you using the ship to scan, I'm assuming? Yes. Or, okay. Yeah, I think you're starting to think that the destruction on your multi-dimensional core is starting to bleed into the rest of your systems because you don't get... Like... It's not that you don't get results back, but the results that you do get don't make any sense. Yes. Uh, so again, it's like it's on the fritz. Uh, what about anybody else? Um, I don't. I'm drawing really pictures in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> With a part of the coffee machine. Ed Locke's just writing this off as a uh, weird stuff happened last time we were here. There was some weird, like, timey-wimey stuff with all the impact Violet Scepter stuff, and then Fade's power's going nuts, so. So I try and get um, Dead Locke to play Knots and Crosses with me. In the dirt. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Wait, what's uh, that? Hey, tech I assume. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Using context clues. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you call it, tic tac toe? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The way you do the the crosses and then the circles. That's what I was like. Grid. Yep. It would yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So lots of lots of crosses. crosses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tic tac toe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you um, doing anything, Tilly? Yeah, I'll I'll look around here. Okay. Uh, go ahead and assess the situation for me. Ten. Sweet. You can ask two questions. All right. Let's take a look at the questions, the things I definitely remember. <laughs> There's uh, something in the this line of questioning. Yeah, let's see. So what here can I use to, like, find the signal or figure out where it's coming from? And what's the second question? Um, my work here is the biggest threat. Like, we were all summoned here by this weird signal. So, surely, it's just us. We're a threat to the signal. Um, yeah. Definitely. Um, the biggest threat is Squee. <laughs> so, Tilly, as you're walking around, like maybe you make like some hard light steps down into the remaining pit of the impound itself, just to try to get closer to where you assume the signal is coming from. Um, you see, there's something weird. Like it's like the air is displaced, but you can't see it like normally. But as soon as you get close enough and like you're able to actually take it in and you know run your programs, get it so that you can see it, it looks like there's some like somebody took a knife and just cut into the world. And you can kind of see peeking through, there's like this bright white. It's not necessarily like shining out, but you're able to see that within it. And you're pretty sure that that is what is causing the signals. As for the biggest threat, that hole gets bigger. And a she looks like a little 12-year-old girl steps out. She's got the bright green hair, she's got a beanie on, her eyes are bright pink, uh, and she steps out looks at you and just kind of puts her hands in her hips and is like, finally, you guys took forever to get here. Look, we're supposed to be here like, she looks at her wrist, there's no watch on it. She's just looking at it and tapping her foot impatiently. And so like, you're supposed to be here like five minutes ago. I thought you guys would have been way faster, but no. Where uh, is everybody? I'm sorry, have we met? I say loudly to kind of attract <laughs> everyone's attention from up up there. Have we met? I thought you were supposed to be like the super smart robot. You should totally know this. No. At last, a worthy opponent. More weapons pop out. <laughs> I will disguise our true purpose. We will lull her into a false sense of security and then defeat her to our great glory. 
<laughs> and she's just like, oh, it's so cute. Look at all your cute little weapons. Oh, and it's adorable. And she kind of starts doing, like, she's, like, doing, like, a head count. Like, one hand on her hip. And she's like, of course, somebody didn't show up to the party. <sighs> really, you guys are terrible at this. I go through all this trouble to set all this up for you so that we can put on this great, big, awesome show. And you can't even be bothered to show up properly? <sighs> Seriously, I'm working with a bunch of amateurs here. I like this one. She sees uh... through you all to the truth. <laughs> At that point, I click and go, uh, who are you calling an amateur? I am a professional. I mean, I guess. I don't know who you are, but take a step back. Oh, that's right. My name is Manic. Um, and let's just say that I am one of your biggest fans. <laughs> Not just you. Lala, you're great, but, you know, all of you, except the one with, although I do really like the weapons, they're so cute. Okay, I guess you're my favorite now, too. Could have fooled me. I'm out. That welcome. Uh, Fade is, is very calmly just tapping away on her phone. Um, she's letting Aegis know uh, that there's some free afoot. <laughs> well, we can't have that, and she takes, it looks like a TV remote off of her belt and points it at you and presses a button and your phone freezes. Oh, you good. Can't, like, even trying to push, like, the volume buttons on the side, you can't push it down. It's, like, stuck. No, That'd no, be a no. Great no. Device. <laughs> I like this one. Involved. I mean, come on. It's a great it's device for, like, stopping people from texting and driving. Have you thought about commercializing it? Mm. Operati? No, I'm not, look, I'm not the star of the show. You guys are. What and show? I don't... <laughs> the show that I'm watching, obviously. I mean, come on, I've watched all of your big fights. I mean, when you guys were fighting the Steel Swarm, and when you were on the moon, and when that creepy monster thing showed up, and then, oh my god, the drama... Ooh, it was just too good. So obviously I had to come in and introduce myself and help you guys recreate this sort of stuff. I mean, duh. Right, obviously. Uh, how exactly are you planning to do that? And she just kind of smiles. And she takes that remote off of her belt again. I asked how. I didn't. Not demonstration. That was not an invitation for a demonstration. <laughs> this is. I'm going to try to get her from her when when that happens. I'm going to charge at her. Uh, try to get it. Do we? I and I quietly take my hand by making me yeah. roll really poorly. Take, take, <laughs> that, take that beanie off. Beanie off while you go for it. Kate. <laughs> it's a fashion faux pas. Major Bane. Uh, yeah. She. <laughs> Pulls the remote at all of you, and you were all. She presses what looks like a pause button to the audience, and you all freeze. And then rifts open up under each and every one of you, and you are falling through them into this sort of white void. And, and nope. <laughs> well, as you're like fall into it, as it closes above you, the whatever she did to you, and you're able to. Mm -hmm move again uh but you are yeah falling through a white void but as you're falling through this you see these kind of bubbles and as you pass through the bubbles it's almost like you're seeing into at first you think it's like the past or the future but then it kind of starts to click that these are different realities so you see ones where for example like paradise never lost it at the impound so the impound is still whole uh, another one where resonance never became lala so just all these different realities and then as you're coming down towards the end you see another big hole open up and you come crashing through that uh yes bubble perfect <laughs> 
And I think just for comedic purposes, uh, Fade, you land first, just splat on your stomach. And then Deadlock lands on top of you, splat. And then Resonance, splat. And then Tilly lands on top. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> like, lands, like, like, sitting perfectly, like, prim and proper, legs crossed, and then Squee will land in Tilly's lap. Uh, and you guys all appear to be back in Halcyon City. Uh, you're in a park, and there are people, but, like, obviously they're, like, standing back. Uh, you can see a couple of heroes off to the side that seem to be dealing with something. One of them is, like, partway through this, like, open portal. Uh, and they're, like, yanking on her, trying to get her out. Uh, but this doesn't seem like your Halcyon City. Uh, Tilly, I think you'd be the first to notice when you look at downtown, there is no Lytech Industries. Uh, in its place is a, another tall building. It looks like it's mostly brick, black windows, and on the top, it says Alpha Industries. So you're able to piece together pretty quick that this is not home, wherever you have landed. I have known from someone named Manic. <laughs> you do not see Manic either. She appears to be gone. So what do you do? Thanks first is I'm going to tell everybody to get off of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fade wheezing out from the bottom of the pile. <laughs> Tilly's like, ah, uh, yes. Tilly's like, where's my friends? Oh. Oh, I see. I'm crushing them under my metallic body. <laughs> uh, Squee, you don't Why happen do you to have so interdimensional much? travel or something to get us back, do you? My dimension drive was damaged, as I have explained to my servant time and time again. I have yet to we be able to repair it. Your ship, which is in is the, the place we just us? left. No. I don't think so. It didn't yeah. land on us, at least. <laughs> yeah, it didn't land on us. <laughs> if it came with you, it is not here. Okay. Do you know how to um, build one from scratch? I'm sorry. There's some. There's like a fight or something going on, like right over there, right? I'm a, I'm a warrior, yeah. not a not an engineer. <laughs> I'd yeah, like to sure. assess that situation real quick. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. I would like to do the same. I okay. think I only got a six, though. There's a fight. Who knows who's winning or losing? Look, I don't yeah, know you're... if we could get involved. I don't know what this place is. It could be the past for all we know, and we could mess a bunch of stuff up. Uh. uh... That's with Superior, right? Yes. So, right on seven. Okay. So, you can, uh, Squeak can ask one question. Um. Hmm. What here is the greatest threat? <clears throat> so, you're looking at this scene in front of you. And it looks like there are two heroes that are fighting somebody. He looks like he's just a plain clothes civilian. Like he's not in a costume or flashy or anything like that, but he is fighting back like hard. Almost like he like he is powered. Um and then you can also see that there are two more heroes that are trying to pull the uh fifth member of their team out of whatever that portal is you think that getting that person out of the portal is more important because you recognize that one of the people trying to pull her out is uh alien and the two people that are fighting the civilian person are not powered they're using gadgets and tech and one of them's in like almost like an iron man suit oh. So something is very wrong with her being in that portal. So what you're saying is I feel the need to protect the person in the portal? You feel the need to get her out of there before anything else happens. Oh, as in she's the... 
she's the cause of problems. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, cool. Then I will immediately fly directly toward her. Cool. Uh, I think the other two kind of have their backs to you. So are you, how are you trying to help? No, I, this is not, you, this is not just flying over. <laughs> strategic. This is literally just fly at, I mean, there's probably a sonic boom. Uh, because he is, he flies very, very fast and can fly through space. So he uh, just immediately just accelerates. Uh, to So there's just like a little cute little blur. And he's the size of a, you know, a Pomeranian. Okay. Um, and Being just loud, the rest of us, oh, God. falls back down. You're right. Everyone's yeah. like, ah, <laughs> from, yeah. from the sonic boom as he takes off and um, <laughs> directly engages who he perceives to be the greatest threat. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll to do that. Uh, I think I, I finally got everything typed in. Uh, that's plus danger. Uh, that's going to be 13. Okay, you can pick two. Uh, yep. Uh, I am going to uh, resist or avoid. Um... Is there anything on them that would indicate that? Because I have some familiar with like dimensional technology. Is there anything on them that would potentially be their way of controlling the um, the portal? Not that you can see. Um, I think that you were able to do so that this is power based. Got. Got it. Gadget. Uh. Then I will. Create an opportunity for my allies as well. All right. So I just slam right into them. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So Squee goes booming towards the person in the portal. Uh, you do manage to avoid the two who turn to try to stop you from doing that as you slam into the back of this person and push them further in. Uh, as you do that, more of these like. Oh, oh. Start. Sorry. I am also going to cause significant collateral damage. Oh boy. Okay. As just cars and stuff go flying. Windows break. Um, yeah. So this is, this cars is, on the street. Yeah, this is this is how he rolls. Uh and I will also uh impress surprise and frighten the opposition. Okay. I think they are definitely surprised <laughs> by you just running in. Uh, so you do, are, are you trying to push her into the portal is what I'm assuming? Yeah, sure. Okay. So you do manage to push her further in, um, as you do that, uh, Tilly is able to see it the easiest, uh, Fade, you're starting to pick up on it too. Um, but the rest of you, it takes a second for you to realize that there's more of these like knife cuts in the air as more of these little rifts start opening up. Um, I will say that the opportunity that is created is that the two heroes that you blew past to ram into their friend are like, no, 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 we need to get her out, not pushed in, she can't. And they'll do a quick explanation that she can't, if she falls into her own portals, it causes problems. Uh, so they beckon the rest of you over to help to yank her back out. Uh, and mm -hmm. once you do, she's also a hero, and as soon as she gets out of the portal, the portal closes and the rifts start to disappear. Uh, in the meantime, I believe the other two heroes have incapacitated the alleged civilian that they were attacking. He is handcuffed on the ground. Uh, and to the three that you just helped will look at you and be like, uh, hi, who are you? Do you surrender? Hi. Uh, I think the alien will just kind of look at you, Squee. Okay, <laughs> like... Squee, Squee, can you not right now? Okay. I will defer to your greater wisdom, Tilda. Thank you. 
Um, yes, the uh, hello, we are. Did, did we ever decide on a team name, I'm guys? Like, I'm like, we didn't. Guys, did we? Can, we have a, can we have a good we're, we're not from around oh. here, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. We're, we're mm -hmm. yeah. tourists, tourists. Okay, cool. Um. Well, thanks for the help, I guess. Are you guys okay? Like, did you get caught in the fight? Have you had anything in your head trying to, add, like, tell you that it could give you whatever you wanted and all you have to do is surrender yourself Not to it? recently! Babe's head is completely empty. We have no. established this. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, no, but that sounds super concerning. Is that something we need to worry about here? Well... We thought that we wouldn't need to worry about them again, but, and she'll just kind of point to the person that they've got, like, on the ground behind her, and apparently it's a problem. Um, are you guys, like, and she just kind of whispers, like, superheroes? Or are you just on a walk with your- I am a perfect human dying person. Um, something that, that- fate is going to say is is very calmly are superheroes accepted here oh yeah no it's not we're not like not allowed to be here i mean we're in costume and there's not like people he's, trying to arrest us so she's hyper conflicted right now <laughs> but we are perfectly normal um mundane human tourists even the robot yes and that's just a really really good, good cosplay yes right i can confirm they are mostly harmless and what's a fluffian doing on earth um uh -uh. this isn't a fluffian this is a I am really very really much a good cosplay Thanks. thank no, you for recognizing <laughs> very very good cosplay they're so committed to it that they would tell you that that's what they are my my assault craft struck a cosmic string, damaging my dimension drive, and I was forced to crash land. Very committed to the role. Been there. That's why I'm here. I'd like kind of gives a look at resonance, like, why are we lying? Maybe they could help. And I just take you to the side, and I'm like, look, all I know about interdimensional things is you're not meant to meet yourself. We don't know who we are in this dimension, and we don't know who they are. So I feel like we need to hone our information before we go telling people who we are because what happens if you meet yourself and then we break over time rifts and I don't want to deal with timelines and like the construct of time and I, I just... Fade is just gonna very casually but justified lean back and just cross her arms over her chest like resonance is taking the words literally out of her mouth <laughs> like <laughs> okay I'm gonna use are you watching closely from my playbook. So it's when you mislead, distract, or trick someone, roll plus superior on a hit, they are fooled, at least for the moment. Uh, so I'm going to go with Resonance's story of, yeah, we're just tourists. This Floofian crash landed. We've been taken care of. We didn't realize it was an alien or whatever a Floofian is. We just thought it was a really good cosplay. Turkey dog thing. <laughs> um, may I ask a, ca a player question, not a character question? Yeah. Um, my one of my play book moves is the gossip mags. Um, mm -hmm. Would that work in this dimension? Because obviously, we will get to that in just a second. Yeah, it's just because I'm <laughs> if I'm not a celebrity in this dimension, then it's like I don't know if. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> yeah, uh, we will touch on that in just a second. Okay. Uh, so yeah, give me the roll for. All right, I got in. Wait, it's plus superior. Yes. Okay, good. So I got an eight. Okay. Which I would choose two. So I'll do avoid further entanglement and confuse them for some time. Okay. Yeah. Um. She just kind of looks at you and then like seems to think about it and is like, "Yeah, okay. Uh, welcome to Halcyon. Sorry, this is." The first thing you saw, uh, if you need anything, then we'll we'll be there. We're the we're the others. Uh, I'm Faultline. Uh, yeah, keep 
keep an eye out for those things that I mentioned. If you get weird voices in your head promising you things, uh, but oh, here, and she'll hand you a card that has like a phone number on it. Just, just Thanks. give me a call, and then she'll go to deal with things. Can I uh, can I use uh, watch to see beams glitter? So this is uh, a roll freak to make a claim about some strange phenomena based on yeah. my experience. Uh, if I'm right, uh, on a hit, I'm right, and you can, you can tweak it. Uh, yeah. And there's an advantage to that. If I miss, there's a little bit of inf extra info. And if I'm wrong, it creates a problem. Okay. Uh, so freak, which is plus two, that is going to be a nine. Uh, so that is a claim is incomplete flawed or tangential i think the claim i will make is that um clearly the humans here are using technology to pave the way for an invasion force some sort of extra dimensional invasion force okay um i will say that that it is flawed because you can't really find any reason to believe that humans are purposefully trying to cause an invasion. Um, but I think that you are, you know that you're on to something and thinking that there is some sort of invasion going on. Yeah, and the flaw is that the humans are being tricked into it, not not yeah. doing it on purpose. Yeah. Ah. I will share yep. that intel with the team. Billy, do you have access to this place's uh, internet? Wait, do they have internet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> do I? No <laughs> internet. I? Uh, Wait, I I my phone. Oh my god. Uh, residents, your phone is not working. <laughs> uh, Tilly, okay, I need a break. <laughs> Tilly, it takes you a second to actually get reconfigured. To the protocols this. are different. No, yeah, everything like it's it's <laughs> it's like what you know, but slightly to the left. So it just takes a little bit of like I mean, it's still only like a split second for everybody else, but like that's an eternity for trying to get that set up. Um, but you are able to connect to this world's. I take my phone and tap it yes. on Tilly, hoping that it will connect. <laughs> I activate my Wi-Fi network. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're hot spot. Yeah, hot spot. Uh, do you try to use any of your apps, Rez? No, I just, I just tapping it on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, until he's able to create a hot spot, so you can hook back in again. But <laughs> I don't so even want to use my phone. I've got it okay. switched. I like. I've got it like. I've had enough with life right now, so it's on like do not disturb. After those peeps, it got put on do not disturb, but I just, you know, okay. I can't have it not access. <laughs> yeah. I think All it'd right. be a good idea to essentially Google ourselves and see, you know, our, our normal names, code names. Yeah. See what, if there are other selves in this world and what they are, where they stand. I agree. And also maybe Google um, like our powers because they might not go by the names that we go Sorry. by, but they might have Goggle. Like... Goggle, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're Let's using Google. Goggle it. Uh, no. Um, so Tilly, you can do that. Um, I think the biggest thing that you notice is that the year is different. You are back in 2005, and you cannot find any record of any of you in... Is internet so old? Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> taking a little bit longer than you would like trying to, <laughs> to find out this information. Um, but what about yeah, impact? It's that, it, it's that, there is that no impact. cable internet, not quite the DSL and nowhere near what it is today. It is yes. it is slow. It's, it's not quite dial up. So but how old are we as characters again? Um We're teens. So. Yeah, teens, like teens. It's like So is this pre we 17. existed? Uh yes. Right. But this is also still not your 
Yeah, yeah. But well, that's what I mean. Is in if it's two thousand and five, none of us yeah, would you have been wouldn't, born yet. You wouldn't have existed yet, anyways. And Tilly, you okay. were also able to see that like uh, notable heroes from your time don't exist here either. Like, there's no impact. There's no Violet Scepter. No Lady December. None of them have made a name here. Yeah. I would go with an alternate dimensional theory where uh, there's enough differences that we don't exist. Okay. That means this dimension is ripe for conquering. No. By who? The Flufians? Well. No, do not encourage it. Do not. Don't. I wasn't thinking that, but now I am. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> if alarm bells are going off. <laughs> Do you know, Squee, you could have a whole new identity here because it's a different like so do you know like you could even give yourself a new more scary name like Princess Fluffy Kittens. I have not yet isn't that such a scary name? It is, it's terrifying, even to me. Mm. Perhaps one yeah. day when I have proven my strength. Yeah, then you could rename yourself as the warrior fluffy. Princess Fluffy Kittens. We're all about rebrands on this team, apparently. Yeah. Yes. I will make myself <laughs> slightly fluffier and slightly pinker. Mm. To, to represent that I'm more threatening here because there are fewer challenges. Naturally. Uh, hey, Paradigm. How are you, your fade? How are you doing? Not good. She's yeah. dealing with that that interdimensional, you know, travel sickness. She's she's very, very, very quiet, more so yeah. than usual. Um, well, there's another problem. Oh, so good. Chip in the back of your neck is malfunctioning. Oh, oh, good. So... Um, <laughs> I'm I am like acutely aware of this, right? Like yeah, it's and okay. I think that um, you notice guys, it. We have a big problem. Okay, maybe not so big for you because you know you guys are not really that fond of me, and you absolutely hate me. Looking at Squee, um, the chip in my neck. Yeah, you get the feeling that it's not working because you're starting to get that telepathic thrum again. I can hear things. This is not good thing. We don't want these things anymore. Um, this isn't like the voices in the head promising you stuff. No, it's no, like your this, normal this, this, paradigm this, this stuff, right? Okay. Crazy. This is you have emotional issue drama. You hate your boyfriend, Tilly. I have never been able to fully connect with you on this level. And then she's gonna look at Squee and just go, "Stop thinking." I'm hungry. <laughs> I don't have emotional issues. Yeah, just like during um, during Fade's little monologue just then, I gave um, Dead Luck like a side eye look, <laughs> just because of Fade's. Uh, you all don't like me comment, and I was like, oh. yeah, yeah. Not again. Same. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> we don't, so that you guys that probably really don't like care because us. you hate me, but... I, I don't want to know your thoughts, and I'm able to hear them. I'm well, then you would have had me go... Seriously? When you have like a negative yeah. interaction and the little person pops up with the minus yeah. sign next to it, Fade sees yeah. that over like all of you. <laughs> yeah. It's because of the presumption of how I feel about her again, which is what got us in the mess in the first place. And I'm like, yeah. oh, we've talked about this and I thought we were making progress, but no. <laughs> That I don't have things to work through myself, but bigger issue here. Chip not working. Can hear thoughts. Oh, I can try to fix that. I'm getting all of my other powers back. I start singing a really annoying song in my head. <laughs> Resonance. 
Put it on your greatest hits album, please. <laughs> My name is. <laughs> My name's Fade, and it's the great name. It's the great name, and it's Fade. <laughs> Now you're gonna have that stuck in your head for the rest. <laughs> just, it, it's just gonna, you know, casually, yeah. It's, it's, it's gonna come up. I'm actually gonna write that down so that I remember it. <laughs> Player. So, Tilly, all right, you can try to take a look at that. Um, yeah. Right. Um, the the other thing, while Tilly is is checking that out, um, Fate is also gonna check like her her wrist bracers that control her powers are they broken too oh good yeah oh it's good all... i don't have that playbook but oh good <laughs> <laughs> like they're still working to an extent but it's it's like they're they're wearing out so you're gradually starting to regain what those All of were supposed my to be blocking original from you. power. Yeah. yeah, fun. Um, yeah. Let's see. So she's got energy blast and enhanced senses. I'm guessing her enhanced senses are going down because the chip being wonky and her other powers taking over. I'll leave that to you if you want it to be that so you suggested to having the senses so much that even having the telepathy come back, it's still kind of just like second nature at this point. Okay. Um, and the telepathy is still pretty low level. Like the chip is still working to an extent, but it is not Okay, so like I'm, I'm, so just, I'm not... just getting teammates it's not it's not like the entire city suddenly is crashing down on you but you like yeah it's gradually God, like would, you're starting to hear <laughs> that would completely incapacitate <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right uh, tilly are you gonna try to help fix it yeah okay uh why don't you go ahead and comfort and support there there Technology. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need Technology. you to do a really good job because if my head goes pop, we're gonna have some really big issues. Like explaining to <laughs> yeah, my yeah, yeah. If it why I'm not that... coming back. <laughs> it would be a problem if it did explode. Um, yes. I think either way. Let's see. Uh, that's an eight. Um, right. So fade can mark potential clear conditioner ship labels. Uh, I'd say that her letting you fix the chip is probably enough to count as opening up. Um, yeah. But I think you can get the feeling that this is a temporary fix. Okay. An idea, guys. That manic person said she enjoyed watching us and all the drama, right? So let's just be super boring, don't do anything, until she takes us back, and we'll say we'll be interesting back where we were. And I break this back. Right away. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> <Run> away. <laughs> <laughs> I have just seen a pet shop that sells accessories for cats and dogs and it has the cutest little things in the window perfect and i ran off it's <laughs> not that interesting <laughs> and then i'm like <laughs> yes ah, appropriate, you know I'm appropriate raiment for a warrior of my metal yes <laughs> I turn to Deadlock and be like, I think we will have great problems being not dramatic. <laughs> Already, I feel like we have failed at that mission at least twice. 
Ah, uh, they have booties and t-shirts. Look at this little harness! It's so cute! <laughs> I mean, There's it's the most so much like the dazzling delicious. sequins yes. and yeah. like flashy, yeah. It's but I all... definitely got. Can I go in and get one of those? You know, the doggy harnesses that you put on the front like a baby. Yes, and it is like but it's dazzled like... with like a princess crown. And... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I need one I'm of them. Just... I'm gonna just I'm gonna just casually wait for her credit card to be declined because she doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know if any of our payment methods will work here. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> the narrative flap says it works yeah. right now only. <laughs> it's fine. I'm gonna try and pay. We'll have to see what well, happens. How hard would it be for Tilly to like? It would take Tilly what half a second to set up a fake identity yeah. with a fake line of credit. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that kind of silly? But we weren't supposed to be here anyway, so does it really count when it's not your dimension? No. Yeah, exactly, today. Uh, Come on. I think it does, actually. I think if someone came to my dimension and started doing bad stuff, it would definitely count for me. What's bad stuff? Yeah. I'm helping the economy. I'm not stealing. I'm helping the economy. With the fake With money. Fake money? Are yeah. inflating it? This We're causing I mean, inflation. No, I guess technically you could be for like three years in the future the when the economy and... crashes because of restaurant yeah. purchases. Pay <laughs> no, come on. Payment will be unnecessary, residents. I'd like to oh. I'd like to turn my little glowing tipped oh, no, oh, okay. on the on the shopkeeper. This is way worse. <laughs> and I would like to use my cuteness to see if I can't make them just give us the stuff. All right. Uh so it's a provoke, uh, I think. Uh yes. Yeah. Okay. This is so much better. Uh that's eleven. I'm just um, completely unaware. <laughs> I'm like, uh, they going... they overreact. And I gain influence over them, and they overreact. You're just like, oh my god, I've never seen something so yeah. cute. Like, it's so cute. Um, oh my god, take whatever you want. Like, right, and like uh, I think this dude's like he didn't really care initially. Anyways, like he's just here to get a paycheck. He he's not paying attention, yeah. and it's downtown Halcyon City, he, like, people come in and steal crap all the time. But it, it's a pet shop, so it's less, like, big villains and more just, like, guy walks in and steals dog food. Yes. Um, and it gives us the cute things we will add team to the pool. Yes. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Great, so Squee walks out, totally blinged out. Prancing. Yes. <laughs> Can he please walk out, but not walk out? Because he's in my harness, and we're both like... Yes. Smiling, yes. <laughs> Squee in the harness. Yes. Princess bedazzled along You guys are making way too good TV right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just can't help it. I was, like, born like this. So I'm, I'm trying really hard, Deadlock. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm not the leader of the team. Been there, tried that, and I look at Tilly. I look back at Deadlock. Yes, I am the Lots leader of the team. Of the side eye. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only emotional sta emotionally stable one out of all of us. <laughs> you For have now. to make the calls. For now. Yeah, that could I'm not no, unemotionally no. stable. It was just exciting. <laughs> um, okay. so you guys go to the pet shop do that um, as you're coming back out Fade you see this um, the civilian that they had pinned down they were like getting him up getting ready to like you know arrest him or whatever but it seemed like fault line the alien lady went and was standing in front of him kind of just staring at him I think Briefly, when the telepathy was starting to come back, Fate, you were able to sense that she's also a telepath. Um, and she's just kind of, like, staring him dead on. Well, mine is the telepath? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna eavesdrop. Okay. Do you need me to unleash my powers? Yes. 
Never ask them if you have to do that. Just wait until they tell you. Never ask. No, I, I knew it was coming because it's it's using a power that is is temporarily on the frith. We're gonna test. Yeah, it. that you're like still actively trying to block. <laughs> yeah, I need this power block, but first. <laughs> but before you do that, so this is probably happening as Tilly is starting to figure out how to fix your chip. Okay. Well, so it, it's Red just, it's the just shop. there, but you now she's she's actually just trying to focus on it. All right. Let's see. That is a plus three. Yep. We were acquiring four. essential armor for Squee. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. You were <laughs> preparing um, for war. Yes. That's uh, for the inevitable invasion. Two d six or just a one d six? Always two d six. Okay. So a six. So a six because my my freak is is um a negative one and I just rolled a one so okay actually Ooh. actually you know what I'm gonna go ahead and use a major boot so I'm gonna reroll that nasty one all right okay so that's it's now a seven okay we went all right uh. <laughs> Would you like to mark a condition to make it so that it isn't unstable or temporary? Um, say that one more time. You can either mark a condition so that it works how you want it to, or it's unstable or temporary. Oh, it can be unstable and temporary. Okay. Until he's um, messing with the the the, the path. Yeah, thing, it's a, so it's, the, it's... It, the chip will click on partway through. Um. What you tap into is more of like a psychic battle than a conversation. So there, and you're able to pick up that there is fault lines consciousness, the civilians consciousness, and there's something else in there. It is foreign, very, very alien, like more alien than like trying to read even Tilly's thoughts. Okay. Um, and they are just duking it out. And it's mostly the foreign consciousness and fault line. Um, as things are progressing, the foreign consciousness is obviously losing. Um, as Tilly clicks the chip back on, that consciousness leaves the civilian. And you briefly, briefly see a little like dark shadow on the ground that sips off towards the city and then you okay. see the rest of the te the hero team all of you see the rest of the hero team mobilize and start running in that direction we should follow um fade wants to go check on the civilian and make sure that they are okay or at least you know let the people who are holding him in custody be aware that uh his brain probably needs to be checked out <laughs> But we okay. have just convinced them that we're normal, mundane. We should sit here they and do convinced. nothing. <laughs> this is their dimension. It's their problem. We fell into their dimension. They know that we're not normal. We're not supposed to be here. They didn't see us full. Let's just sit we, here and do we, nothing. We, conv we convinced them. We did. Yes, Deadlock we did. did a move that convinced them that we were normal, mundane people. Oh, uh, convinced them to at least leave you guys alone. And yeah. confuse them into being like, why are they lying about being heroes? Like, whatever, if you want to protect your civilian identity, that's cool. But it was less that they believe that you're from town and more that they were like, okay, you guys don't want to be best with, we'll leave you alone. Mm -hmm. Well, it says on a hit, they are fooled, or at least for a moment. Yes. And then I chose two. Yeah, so they buy that you're Taurus, yeah. but not mundane Taurus. <laughs> Not normal human mundane. Yeah. I feel like a couple of us really didn't sell that for some reason. <laughs> Why, <Yeah>. Tilly? <laughs> I, I, I can't imagine which two would ever cause that problem when she recognized a Fluffian. Um, Shall I wear my Lock human is... suit? Oh, God. No, that no. Lock is going to go sit on a bench and with her arms crossed. Like, I'm waiting until they she sends me back. <laughs> You know, honestly, I think Fade would probably sit with her because, you know, still dealing with the, the temporal 
rift sickness and, and all of that. She is not handling jumping rifts very, very well at all. <laughs> you also saw like a disturbingly like amount of future realities that were also not good. Probably yeah. brought bad memories. He's a hero in all oh, of them. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you definitely weren't a villain in any of them. He's definitely sitting here going, wow. That's literally just like my my wall of reality tree, mm -hmm. except it was all freaking bubbles. And just like flashes, like it's just flashes of images. But yeah. Uh, so, yeah okay, so, so your you theory, sit next you... to Deadlock and just just chill. Like this, this is this is bad. Yes, Res. What a go. So your theory, uh, Deadlock, is that um. By the way, I've still got Scree with me. Um, is that if we're boring enough, mm -hmm. she will stop the show. Right. And take and us we're back. essentially, to her, we're not actors, but we're like reality TV stars, right? Uh -huh. She's forcing us into a new place for more drama, more whatever, whatever she wants. She wants good TV, essentially. She said she's been watching us. And that we're her favorites and we have all this drama and everything. So if she sent us here against our will and we essentially go on strike and be super boring, if she wants what she wanted originally, she's going to have to send us back. Or she will simply cancel theory. the program. Yeah, alternative theory. What happens if she just does what Squee said, either cancels us, stops it? So what about the possibility of seeing this episode through I don't negotiate with terrorists and then I'm, I'm, I'm just posing a theory right here and then in doing so she comes to review our episode and then we kind of deal with her I, yeah I'm just saying she could just like we don't know what that remote does. She could just like put us on permanent pause. What was me? If we're truly her favorite characters, she would want to keep watching us. You are her favorite characters Not because you were entertaining. If you are boring, you will no longer be the favorite characters, and she will find some other. But she knows she can change it if yes. she sends us back. Or she will. Or she will introduce drama. She will force drama into the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> we could make things worse. Yeah. Uh, did so during that fight there were other rifts, right? Like similar tears, and mm -hmm. do we know their source? Um, I, I think the most that you're able to put together is that somehow the hero that was pushed into her own portal. As that was happening, the farther into the portal she went, the more rifts started to open. So, so there that was some hero sort of conflict there. So that hero can make dimensional rifts. She well, it uh, looked like. Do you want to try to look up that hero and see what? Yeah, let's, let's about? do some <laughs> some searches here. All right, I uh, will just say that's an unleash your powers. Who has a uh, fault lines business card? I do. Okay. Um, we should probably be in contact with them because they the have the connection to the person that we do, were you get there, to out of the thing. We, do we got any major boons? Yes. We I'm going to use one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Two major, two minor, two major banes, three minor banes. Okay. Uh, did Tuff use that major use bane one? earlier? Yeah, she did. I saw that one. My my Twitch is down right now, so uh, if someone could use that thing for me, that'd be great. Okay. I got an eight. Okay. Uh... Do you want to mark a condition, or, is it un or do you want it to be unstable or temporary? I will mark a condition. Okay. Let's see. This is a little scary. I'm going to hide it. It'll be great. 
Which don't always know where we are. Down. <laughs> you know, every, that always works out well for your team. Cap it down. Yeah, just hide them. Cap it down. Put it in the box. Stick that box in the warehouse. That's gradually filling up, but don't worry about that. Listen, they're apparently looking to me up to me as a team leader. I gotta maintain a cool and calm thing while I, I search on the interwebs. Yeah, yeah and the rescue team time got time. called emotionally unstable, so <laughs> emotional problems. Okay, <laughs> issue. It's fine. Um, okay, so you are able to, with the limited information that you have, you're able to do a quick rundown through what internet archives there are available to you and data that is available to you. Um, her name is Cosmic. She is uh, sort of a newer hero. She's most well known for working with a group called The Others, which includes Faultline and the other heroes that you met, uh, one of which is Heatlock, and then there's Manifest and Vengeance. Um, they are the only big superhero team currently in the city. Halcyon has not yet seemed to hit the point where it's like active superhero battles every day, mass scale invasions, like there's no Aegis or any of that. Things are still relatively calm in comparison with modern day. Um, you are able to learn that her power set is based on opening uh, portal, like space portals, basically. So um, that's what she does. However, the downside is that she cannot enter her own portal or it starts to collapse in on itself. And then that's how you get the space-time rifts that probably are the things that got all of you sent back to this time. So, I say, summarizing some of what I've read about these heroes, if we follow them, perhaps they can get us a ride back? If we were to somehow alter how her powers work a bit, see if we can control where it goes. Or, I mimic her powers. And then you each run into each other's rifts, and then chaos happens. It'd be very exciting. <laughs> yeah, let's just test that theory. That'll be great. <laughs> it's, it's very scientific. Yes. <laughs> very myth Uh... I say, let's follow where they went. It shouldn't be too hard. There aren't many heroes around. You were chasing a shadowy thing. Huh? I've got to say, I'm really over shadows right now. Same. Like, shadow monsters. I'm over it. <laughs> At this point, this is when Fade is, is going to, you know, relay the information that she was able to pick up while the glitch was happening um, with her her headpiece. Um, and it, it explained, you know, what Faultline was doing with the civilian and, you know, the shadowy creature just flopping out. Um, at this point, she's also going to kind of, like, put two and two together, you know, that's probably the thing that they're talking about when they say, you know, it's going to give you whatever you want. It's here to cause more mayhem than our green-haired and pink-eyed friend um, possibly has. Alternatively, she could have also sent us back here to help them with this problem. Yeah, I'm sure she's just... I, I'm, a, I'm a very here. noble person, and that's why she sent us here. You can't trust without them asking. Being... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Just, yeah. There, there's there's also not maybe so much for me, but for some of you guys, we're in a timeline where your guys' families exist as normal, possibly. We don't exist here, so it may be a good chance for you guys to see what life was like in, where are we, 2002? 2005. I, okay, 2005. I don't have a family fit. But you do. Who? 
as much as you are begrudging. Me! <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. And I give you a really big hug when that happened, just because I know it winds you up. So I'm just, yeah, yeah, and you, and you know that I'm just straight on. I squished you between. <laughs> <laughs> Your feeble attacks will not hurt me. <laughs> I should accept her affections. <laughs> um, you know, I was trying to teach you the deadliest of moves there, Squee. I I'm see. glad you were. I'm glad it's you uh, were. Okay. Yes. Fate is just going to casually look at Resonance and go, can you not teach him things that are going to, you know, hinder me since I'm the babysitter? I didn't teach you anything. He learned how to get out of a difficult situation. Uh-huh. Okay, anyway, I you think Tilly's right. We just have to follow those people. He's probably going to use that against me to get a hold of the sweets. Oh, hey, anyways. Um, but yeah, um... It would be interesting to see where they are and what they're doing here. I'm under the impression that this is an alternate enough dimension that much of our relations don't exist. Yeah. Like, none of the superheroes exist. Like, Lady Winter doesn't exist. Like, a bunch of the people who are adults in our dimension don't exist, so therefore our fa there's no correlation to as to why our families would exist we, here. Do, do, we, do we know their actual identities? Like, do you know Lady December's real name? Um, I would because I was like a big okay, fan. Then, but... then Tilly, can can you goggle up the original name? I mean, there there should be like a white pages website, right? Yeah, you could look up Impact's name too. Uh, but that's what we did, and there was no yeah. evidence of Impact. But we looked up superhero names. I, I presume that we probably went through the full. Yeah, yeah, we probably yeah, yeah you. Probably went through because uh, you know names, Tilly, but yeah, that's not exactly super secret for you. Um, the you were not able Im to find him, but I mean, there might Bryce, be people with similar Bryce names, Wyan. but <laughs> <Bryce Wyan. laughs> so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you might be able to find people with similar names, but it's not the people that you know. Yeah. Okay. I think I think this is this is entirely different. Either way, let's let's follow them. I agree. Yes. Now that we've been gone for like ten minutes, but yeah, we'll, we'll like figure it out. <laughs> we can catch up. Yeah, that's fine. You guys um, can find us. Would. No, because she, she'd probably be too far away. But what I was thinking was, you know, because she's she's a fellow telepath, would Fade be able to kind of like? Wasn't the telepath the be person? Uh, alien. No, it was it was Faultline. Faultline is the oh. Faultline's the, the alien. main. Yeah. yeah, the the main yeah. the the alien lady. She's. So well, you're trying to block your telepathic powers. Look, if oh, I yeah, they're blocked now, aren't they? <laughs> Kind well, until we fix the chip, at least temporarily, you can try. Do you want to try to make contact with Faultline? No. I mean, I could just try and listen for them too. Or call the number she gave me on her business card. Yeah, we could also number? try and find a payphone. <laughs> a payphone? What's a payphone? Yes, a payphone. That's the kind of device we should use here. That's fine. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Resonance, Resonance and I will reconnoiter. So you got me in the Baby Bjorn, right? Yeah. So I can basically fly with you on my back. Right. Oh god, nice. So so from a distance, it looks like you're just flying. And then there's, and you've got like a little fluffy on, on your belly. And so, yes. We will like use your enhanced bear. hearing to zero in on the disturbance and then up into the air. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Remind me when we get back to see if I can mimic his his abilities. You should be able to. Oh boy. I'd rather practice in a more controlled environment. 
<laughs> we see I, what happens I, when I try to do Tilly's. I, I don't do a sonic boom, but we do probably have like one frame where like Resonance's skin is peeled back yeah. <laughs> from the from the near supersonic launch. And then we're yeah. you know half a mile above the city. Use your superior okay. senses to find the source of disturbance. So I'm just I'm listening to see if I can find. Alright, uh yeah, let's assess the situation. Get listening from a half a mile up with your human ears. She I has got human ears. control. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I'm like, if any of you play Phasmo, I'm doing, I'm like the, um, what to recall right now. Oh. What's, the, what's the device that you take in and you listen oh, the, to sound? Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but I know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, EVP? Oh, Electronic yeah. voice phenomena? No, the, uh, no, the, no, it's like a little satellite thing. Oh. Yeah, it's I what it's called. My brain's going Listening to voice on a stick. Yeah. Um, what am I doing? Parabolic I'm this. That's it. Parabolic. I am rolling superior. Okay, so I rolled an eight, and my superior, I think, yeah. is three or two. So it's a ten or ten plus at least. Okay. Her superior are... is three. Yes, it's an eleven. Okay. Um, so you are able to pinpoint where they are, and then you can ask a couple of questions on top of that. Mm -hmm. What questions shall I ask? What here can we use to question mark? What is the biggest threat? Where is what here is in the greatest thing? What here is there? Um Hmm. None of those questions quite go with that. I guess. Um I guess Ooh. What here can I use to get to them quickly? I don't know. And this could be a chance to like maybe learn something else about the situation and outside of finding them. So there could be something else that you pick up on with this. Yeah, I guess if I just do um, the general what it, what is the greatest threat. Because I don't think how best could we end this quickly is going to... Like, that's the overall situation, but obviously I'm not assessing that situation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it was what here can I use to get to them, and then what is the biggest yeah. threat? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so they are heading towards the Alpha Industries building. Um, okay. So if the team can just get there, you'll, you'll be there. Um, mm -hmm. And then the biggest threat... As you're listening, and like you can hear them uh, all running around, you can hear another voice. Um, it doesn't seem to necessarily be speaking to you directly, but it's like whispered promises of, accept me, I'll give you money. Take me in, I'll give you strength, I'll give you power, I will bring back your loved ones, I will grant you whatever you want. So you're, you can hear this kind of in between all of them. As Are there several or just one? It's just one, mm -hmm. um, but it's like repeating itself. Like it sounds like you can hear, like there are other people walking around, it's a city. Um, and it sounds like almost every time it passes another person, you hear whispers of a promise, but the heroes are right behind and like, no, 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 don't do it. And then keep going. Okay. Um, so you're, based on what you know from what Faultline told you, you think that this, whatever it is that they're chasing, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. um, but whatever they're after is a big threat. Okay. Um, so Squee, should we go down in front of these hero people and like then send a message back, or should we go back and get the guys and tell them and lead them to that building they're going to? We should lead our fellows. Splitting the team is a bad idea. That's what we learned. So we're going back to the team. Day one in Fluffy and Boot Camp. Boot camp. <laughs> okay, so turn there. around. Yeah, I always have a battle buddy. Yeah, so uh, we will go from hover to free fall, and then I will power dive. 
So another scene of just like Red yeah, holding like, like, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and the, the the nice little you know uh quiver lines in the air to show that we're dropping yeah. at, at completely mm-hmm. unsafe speeds and then just stop. I would like that also to be like all the because I'm screaming so loudly and I have sonic control, but I'm not quite in control right now. I'd yeah. like like all the people around's faces to be going. Yeah, or like yes. like the entire city is kind of shaking a little bit, and there's yeah. like yeah, just you're a teeny dropping bit. through the panel. There's like the trail of A's going up, and they're getting like yeah. bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Perfect halt. We have spotted our quarry. Make yourselves ready for battle. And I, I feel like I feel like Squeeze like really like and I'm like this. <laughs> Hair's like a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you actually you got a, a Farrah Fawcett wave action going on. Oh yeah. It actually, yeah, it's like it's it's movie styled. Uh, <laughs> That's perfect. funny. All right, are you guys gonna just head over to the thing? Yes. I, I assume right. we're I assume we're not walking. Yeah, how are you getting there? Well, one person's on squee, the rest get the bucket and I get to leap with them. <laughs> I, mean, I could try to mimic Squee's powers to fly. Yes. I'm used to I'm used to doing flight, copying flight. Maybe not squeeze flight, but I used to always do it with uh paradigms. Oh, it should, this should be easier because Paradigms was self telekinesis, which required yeah. a lot of control. And this is just like, I, mm-hmm. gravity doesn't mind me. Okay. Tilly, perhaps if you manifested glider wings, I can tow you. Oh, that would probably be better. It would be my great honor. All right. Glider wings. And then my, my little tail will grow to be like 20 feet long and wrap around you all right and then i presume we'll just hold on to fade with that (laughs) fade is trailing behind holding on to like the end tail of something and just screaming (laughs) uh tilly is the kite fade is the kite tail yes yeah yeah we try to travel in the most ridiculous way possible at all times yeah it's utterly ridiculous and there are definitely (laughs) people that are like what the as you go flying away. But like, is it a bird? Is it a plane? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's a weird dog and a screaming teenager. <laughs> it's a, it's yeah. a kite competition year again. <laughs> Somebody some really teenagers, went out a robot and a, and a therapy animal. What's that about? Yeah, what are they doing? And Deadlock, were you able to successfully copy the flight? Uh, I assume so. Cool. That was easy. Yeah, I think that it's simple enough that you've copied enough people that can fly that you're, it's it's not difficult on that regard. I feel like you would hold on to someone just in case. Like, I feel like (laughs) just in case (laughs) you'd have a hand on either like me or Tilly. (laughs) Yeah. Just (laughs) holding hands. Um, all right, so you guys make it to Alpha Industries, uh, land down in front of the building. The heroes have already made it inside, uh, and I'm assuming you go in. Yes. It is a pretty sleek interior. Um, there's, like, a receptionist desk, and the receptionist will just kind of look up and, like, look at all of you and... Be like, sorry, we're not letting people in. There's an emergency. The whole building shut down. You, you'll have to come back later. Miss Takiyama isn't taking appointments right now. You will not thwart us, Earthling. Did your dog just talk? It's not a dog. It's a floofian. It's a long story. Uh, what's up? Yeah, the, the floofian needs to go in. Uh, we're just here to mind him. Well, did you not? There's like an. There's. It's, the Fluffian handles party. emergencies? I've never heard of a yeah, Fluffian. What are you part of it. about? Yeah, you probably need to know bases. We probably said too much. Could you let us through? Can I use my no. move again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the delinquent move. Just lead, distract, or trick someone? <laughs> sure. 
God damn it. <laughs> Four, five, six. Yeah, I just missed it. Uh, can I do my lead? lead? <laughs> so that that's oh, sorry, you can now. Yeah, so you failed. Uh, can I do time for a show? Ooh. Okay. Okay, let's roll. Let's see what happens first. <laughs> we. Ooh, I got a five and a six. Nice. Ooh, wow. Okay. Um, let me just double check. Do I have to add anything to this? Oh, and uh, then it's plus superior. Yeah. You, so it's like you knock it out of the ballpark. <laughs> it's like twenty-two. <laughs> no, it is. <isn't>. Yeah. <laughs> it's high. It's, it's, high. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very good. Um, uh, so, I and a ten plus, I can name two NPCs present. The name is either volunteer help or information, express admiration, or ask for your help. Uh, did you so have any other NPCs present besides the receptionist? What other NPCs are present? Oh, how, about, how about there's a security guard? Yeah, there could be a guard. One of the heroes could be coming oh, back yeah. into the lobby or... Well, it's, it says it's GM's choice. Okay. Um, Alright, so what, what does this look like as because deadlock's trying to so like, lose your way he, in and he's like no you're who are you people what are you doing i can't let you in there's an emergency what are you so and then, i'm like fuckers <laughs> <laughs> destruction <laughs> techniques look we're superheroes too we can help okay um and as you do that we'll say that one of the other heroes it's not fault line um, this one is manifest she has like a black almost like dragon like mask on um and she has a whole bunch of tech like she's decked out with all sorts of gadgets doodads yada 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 and she runs in as you're doing this and she just kind of looks at the receptionist who's like whoa another superhero and she's like what's the receptionist's name uh we'll call him hank Okay, well, I've I've wrote Hank in Sparkles. <laughs> and he's like, wow, that's so cool. That's my that's me. <laughs> uh, and she runs in and she's like, we need all the help that you can get. What are you doing? And then she'll just look at you guys and be like, I, I, come on. And then start running. Very well. You heard the... What? <laughs> 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 so he just gigs you out. <laughs> All right, yeah. So he will uh, let you in. Um, I think he'll give Tilly a security card just in case, but it'll get you access to elevators and all that fun stuff. Um, so you guys can follow Manifest in. Um, the building appears to have been. It's in the process of being emptied, like there are other employees that are leaving. Um, this seems to be a tech company. You can see a variety of like labs and workshops and um, then like office spaces where they're designing new uh, tech. Um, she will lead you farther in and then she will go to an elevator, swipe her card, step in, and press the basement three. And she's like, come on, the everybody else is down there. We gotta catch this thing before it gets away. What is the nature of our foe? What are its okay. tactical weaknesses? Well, it's basically a dimensional parasite. It needs a host in order to leave the place between dimensions. So it and the others like it pro make promises of wealth, power, whatever it is that their host wants, and then uses the host life force to establish their own bodies. And then eventually they gradually take over the planet. It happened to fault line. Ah, very well. I shall consume it. Good luck with that. Can you see it? Are you... Are you telepathic? 
Not exactly. Antony. <laughs> you don't need to wait for Antony. I mean, no, it, they're, they're invisible to naked eye. I was, I was able to see it. Oh. So you're telepathic. Sometimes? complicated okay we don't have time for this just get in the elevator <laughs> I mean naturally you're following along yeah <laughs> and then so as you guys all get to push the closed doors button you guys get down into the basement um you get down there it is more like more heavily lab laboratory based um these ones seem a little less tech and a little more biological medical than the ones that were upstairs um and she does have to like you get in the elevator she has to like swipe a card punch a number in punch another number in swipe the card again twist a key and then it goes down um so this is pretty un like under lock and key um by the time that you make it down the other four heroes are kind of just standing around and they just look unhappy um uh, fault line is like sat down against the wall with like her head in her hand just kind of rubbing her forehead. um vengeance and heat lock are both just leaned up against another wall first crossed and cosmic is pacing and they'll look up as the elevator comes down and fault line just kind of shakes her head and she's like well no it's it's too late it got away Where would it be headed? Um, How should we track our quarry? Fade's gonna look at Squee and very calmly go, I may not be smart, yes. but I am very curious. Can you smell it? It is possible. I don't say why not. I could try. Go ahead and give it a shot. Um, Unleash? Since I'm extending senses? Yeah. Uh, I think my freak is two, but let me double check. Yeah. Uh, ooh, 13. Okay. All right. Um, I will say you can't smell it it doesn't have a scent. Um, you are, however, able to pick up on a trace of pheromones mm, that yeah. you are, yeah, that you kind of can piece together. It didn't come from the thing. It came from a person. Mm. But you are able to kind of figure out that it's from that thing attaching to somebody and leaving the building. Ah, it has found a host. We must track it and destroy them both. <laughs> Paul was like, oh, no, no, we're not going to kill the host. Or, <laughs> just, a, just the thing. Or we give it a reason to hop into your mouth. I'm, um, yes. <laughs> and we <laughs> see the person. It is time for Dindin. That is. Yes. Paul <laughs> like, oh no, this is serious. <laughs> Uh, so we'll help you maybe in exchange for help with our problem I mean the fact that you're not where you're supposed to be yeah that fault line that, just that, that, you. <laughs> that, that would be the one mm -hmm. okay so you're not gonna play up the whole word Taurus and completely no. normal people. We were trying to get our bearings first. You never know where you get dropped, if it could be anti-hero or if we had alternate versions that were being... It, you, you took the Their lives were poorly prepared and foolish. That. They, they were bad. Uh, it's fine. You guys are just kids. We are clearly superior heroes from an alternate dimension. Right. And we're, we're actually a pretty big deal where we're from, but... Okay, well, good, good to know. Um, Even yeah. though we don't have a name, we're, 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 everyone knows this in Canada. Yeah, 
Canada, oo. So, yeah, they'll kind of all get up and be like, okay, well, and she'll look at Manifest and she'll be like, can you get in to get the employee records and figure out who it attached itself to and see if we can track them down? And so Man- Manifest is like, yeah, whatever. And she'll be like, but we should not, this isn't the best place to do it. And she'll go back to the elevator um, and take you guys up to a different lab. This one is at the top of the building. Um, and she walks into the lab, takes a seat, and uh, swipes like a bunch of random pieces of scrap metal off the desk, wires, something lands on the floor and sparks, and she's like, oops, and then just kind of like, well, whatever, it didn't pull up. Uh, pulls out a very clunky laptop and flips it open and starts going to work. <laughs> um, and she will get a list of possible employees that were working in that lower basement level for you guys to go investigate. Uh, So Fault Lane will take a look at the list and she'll be like, can, and she'll kind of look at Utility and she'll be like, can you just like Find these people? Is that something robots can do? Do you just like know where people are? It depends on the robot, but I can try. Great. And she'll hand you the list of names. There's probably like five five names on there. Um one of them's like a janitor, another one. Most of the like three of them are scientists. They work in the medical area. And then there's like an actual doctor that's been and supervising and helping to um, figure all that out. So you're, I think it it's not very hard for you to find their home addresses so that you guys can check it out if you would so choose. Um, and Fault Lion will kind of look at everyone and be like, okay, so you guys know what's going on. Uh, we Ooh. ran into a signal back in our area, um, that led us to our old base, um, and her name is Manic. Okay. Uh, she apparently has the ability to pause time. I'm going to assume that she can rewind and fast forward. It's it's very TV remote. Um, and she used this device to open a rift and dropped us here. Okay. And she was wearing a beanie. Was she like a little kid? Yes, she is very my. Yeah, yeah. Green She's hair, little, pink eyes, hair, oh, pink little eyes. Corp is the reason that Cosmic fell into her portal. She just ran over and pushed her into it. I thought it was just some kid playing tag at the park. Oh, good. He likes causing dramatic situations. But yeah, well, she's definitely caused a big problem. These things are no. Do you know what? Has anybody explained to you what these are? I know I kind of told you to be on the watch out for anything, telling you that it can give you whatever you wanted. They are interdimensional parasites that need a host to, over time, manifest their physical reality and take over the entire planet. Okay. Somebody at least explain that. We call them phantoms. They destroyed my home planet. Completely took it over. They are obsessed with entering any dimension that they can and proving their strength, building their army. And they do that by Kate taking is just over the populace. Side eye squee. Yes, we will assist you in seeking <laughs> vengeance for the loss of your people. Right now. <laughs> Even if it requires the destruction of this planet, we will deny them your. They will. We will deny them the conquest. Come, I... let us to action. 
All right. Well, at least we can always count on the Flupians to be ready to fight. Of course. I take it your planet was not infested by these things. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Our people are far too mighty to fall prey to some pesky parasite. Well, and, you're and supposed to be stronger than the ones here. Our reality was was not, at least to my knowledge, being hindered by these things, but I wouldn't put it past them if we have Rift Girl messing around with things that shouldn't be messed around with. Yeah. Question, well, though. Is she a Rift Girl, or is she just a remote control girl? Like, because the Rift kind of looked like the Rift that your friend created. So, I, did she make the rifts, or did they make the rifts? I don't know. I can't say for sure. Um, things get she weird opened. when Cosmic gets pushed into our portals, but this time it did open the rift between dimensions, which allowed those things to get back here. We've so, gotten rid of them once, and now we have to do it all over again. Circling back real quick, so you're saying the Floofians here were overtaken by the phantoms this seems Some unlikely escaped, this is but... this is clearly an inferior reality <laughs> maybe but i don't know we... so just to clarify there's a interdimensional parasite that is preying on people to become hosts of it so it can take over this planet yes yes and, and then there's this... ways to bring more of them into this world cool and they came in through the rifts that were created by your friend yes and we were brought in by rifts that are similar to that but at the same time we were paused by little girl green hair pink eyes so we're not sure if little girl can just pause us or can create rifts. I don't know. Okay, I, cool. This I saw her for the first time today. I didn't get a good read on her. Possible she just knew when it would happen. Yeah. Yeah, especially if if I mean she stated to us that you know we're her favorite to watch. Well, that's creepy. It's super disturbing. Yeah. It's 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 a little unnerving. It seems justified. Um, we are very entertaining. Sure, but I didn't sign anything saying people could watch me. I wonder if I get pixelated you when I shower, like patient. in that game, The Sims. <laughs> you mean the Mims? <laughs> yeah. Right, oh, the Mims. Mims. Oh, is that what it's called here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like okay. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? Oh. Mm. You guys don't have, like, a... I mean, have any of you ever had, like, a near-death experience? <laughs> of course. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Multiple occasions. <laughs> oh, this is a bit more specific. Okay, better question. Could mm -hmm. any of you see it? I did. I probably could if I copied her powers, but I don't really want to. Ah, uh, power mimicry. No, you, you, you don't, you don't want the telepathy. And right now, the the, the thing is is doing its thing because everybody's quiet, and I'm okay with this. Other people find telepathy very yeah. easy to deal with. It's literally not that strange. So you have telepathy. Yeah, it's it's under lock and key right now because I lost control of my powers uh some time ago. Oh, and it's all I'll... the time. Yeah, that old base we talked about that got destroyed by her powers. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah, no. I uh leveled my child at home when I was a kid. It happens. Yeah, our um our version of this place didn't take too kindly to that, so. What do you mean your yeah. version of this place? We have a place called Aegis. This is what? Alcor? It's like a oh, government no. agency. This is, oh, this is Litech. 
Yeah, this yes. isn't a government agency. This is they do technology and medical advancements. Not they're not government. This is where Litec is in our in our city. Okay, okay. Now now. The player is catching up to where we actually. <laughs> um, so can you not just create a rift and send us back? Uh, it, it doesn't work like that. She doesn't exactly choose where you go, and also it's extremely physically painful. Oh. And to her, her, oh, that just, to her, she's. It, I can't speak for her but she's said that it's like being ripped apart in a million different directions so wait what are her powers exactly if she can't use them because they're so painful no no it's only when she's no. put into it yeah she can open portals for other people and things to transport through she just can't go through them herself well, right we're not asking actually... we're not asking her to go through them Okay, but here's the thing. I think it just transports over the uh, space, and yeah, the, only when she uh, into it does it make dimensional portals. So we might have to rethink mm. our plans about getting our own way home using her powers. That being said, we should probably investigate these addresses to handle the situation at hand, so we can then focus on solving our problem yes. thereafter. How many people are there, and how many of us are there? There are five names on the list. Uh, five different addresses, and then you also have uh, the others, the like fault line in them that are also going to be helping. So, although we say we shouldn't split up, I kind of feel like we should we because surely, and, and one member from each team go with one another. Oh, vengeance different addresses. <laughs> yeah. Except because, we, uh, we with either Tilly or or residents for safety reasons. Uh, fault line will kind of speak up and be like, "Well, we might need to just split into two groups so that we have someone on each team that can identify if the thing is there." Yes. So I yeah. can take my team. You guys can take your team, and we'll reconvene. This is more sensible. It. Yeah. Okay. I just think we need to cover as much ground as possible. But yeah, <laughs> if only two people can see them, it makes sense. Yeah. Manifest looks very unhappy because she's been like inching closer and closer to Tilly and it's just like staring. And she looks <laughs> fascinated. Well, as fascinated as she can't hide a mask. And her shoulders like slump. <laughs> she's like, God. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to be my 10th grade science project. <laughs> very, very interested. On um, a on a player level, is it okay if we take like a five minute recess so I can use the bathroom, get a new drink, and get some food because it's half past seven and my stomach's eating it? So. Yeah. I just see if everyone else wants to. You can carry on without me. I just need to oh yeah I'm, I'm good with taking a break i need more yeah. coffee yeah we can take a brief pause five minutes sounds good yay <laughs> and we're back Ooh. back with snacks <laughs> and the sun Lazing in my face, but that's fine. It's you can't tell that my good. my ears actually glow. Oh, oh, <laughs> they're they're glowing a blinding white right now. Yes. All right. Um. So where we left off, everyone was talking too much and fighting not enough. <laughs> not enough battle for the Clupian. Um. Okay, so you guys were deciding to split up into your team and then have the others go as well um since fault line and fade can see the creatures and deadlock may be able to too if she can copy the yeah. telepathy from fade and i can smell uh, them my antennae yes. and squeak can find them with the pheromones all right cool uh so you all split up the list uh I think that they will give you guys three that are closer, um, and then they will take the ones that are farther away because they're in both cars, so they will drive there. 
Um, so we'll say that you guys get the janitor and then two of the scientists, and yes. then they take the other scientist and the doctor. So, where are you going first? Janitor. Uh, <laughs> if I were an interdimensional parasite, I would choose the janitor because their work is significantly more important. Actually. All right. So you head to the janitor uh, lives in one of the apartments downtown. It's not the nicest. It's not the worst. Like it's in a semi decent area, but it, it's far from high class. Um, and you can head up to the door. I assume you try to get buzzed in. Why would we go through the door? Do we know because what, do we know what floor and apartment they live in? Yeah, you have all of that. Does it have an exterior wall? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's suddenly looking very adorable. Yes. So what do you do? Um, Resonance. He's, uh, he's doing that super cute thing that he does when he's, he's about to get his way. If you will not use your senses to determine if this is our target, I will determine if this is our target. Can't you just smell it out first? I can attempt to smell it out first. <laughs> Before we level, you know, half a city block with your sonic boom powers, just use, use the sniffer. I was simply planning on breaking through the exterior wall, but that's fine. Uh, so assess or, or uh, unleash? Let's do another unleash. Okay. Oh, yeah, no. Um, I'm going to use a minor boon that Sin just gave us. Thanks, Sin. To bump that to a seven. Uh, and I will become angry. And I think you become angry because you do smell it's similar. I became angry because of the dawdling. <laughs> the dawdling? Uh, perfect. Yeah, you're sick of everybody not... Rushing in and taking action as warriors should. Yeah. Um, so you do smell pheromones. They're similar. They're they don't register as the same ones from Alpha Industries, but it does still smell like something attached to a host. Extra dimensional mojo, but not the same. Yeah, but not the same extra dimensional mojo. Like they all have diff like different yeah. fingerprints, yeah. basically. Very well. I'm angry. Mm, squee. Eyes get really big. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm eyes. for sure busting through the exterior wall of the apartment. Cool. Uh, I'm still attached to Ray, so... yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, you don't have to I'm be. Just, you don't have to be. I think he's holding his weapon. I think he could wiggle his way out of the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can, I, I'll just go boneless and then zip out okay. and then... And then, well, yeah. I could just clip it and you fall down. All right. Then, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, spray of bricks and glass and rebar and stuff as I just plow into the side of the building. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, you open up the exterior wall that leads into his apartment. Um, he is like in his underwear, hunched over a bowl of cereal, like watching TV and just looks as his apartment wall suddenly busts in and he's like what are you here to rob me i don't have anything we are here to vanquish the multidimensional parasite that has taken you over it is likely promising you things they are all lies oh no, I don't know what you're talking about. You got the wrong guy. I will give you I will give you one chance before I consume yeah, he's you. Lying. 
He's like, well, I don't know. I don't want to be eaten. <laughs> the, like, the, just... the jaw just opens and opens and opens. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't... Look, it, I don't know where it, it went. Like, it just... just uh, I, I don't know. It just said that it would give me stuff. And so I said yes. And then it, like... I don't know. By this time, has everyone else gone up to, like, the whatever, fifth floor? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I consume him? No. No. Yeah, hold on. We, we try to minimize collateral dam damage as much as possible, Squee. That is foolish. You're right. But these people are fragile. And they Very. take their domiciles to be a place of safety. That also is foolish. That is clearly not oh, so actually accurate. It's kind of hypocritical to uh, destroy the stuff you're trying to protect. We are trying to protect the universe protect from extra-dimensional incursion. A single domicile and one, one human all of compromise you. is, is arguing a about small this. sacrifice to pay to save the galaxy. Sure, but if you can avoid it, why not try to you avoid it? You should avoid it. Yeah. So do we just ask the creature to leave? Benefit. But I'm so hungry. I just... I've just thrown the guy a robe. Yeah, he's like wrapping himself. Like he was like already pulling a blanket <laughs> over himself, and he like takes over. He's like, "Thanks." Um, what are you guys doing in my ha apartment? So that thing that's telling you, um, that it'll give you whatever you want, is trying to invade the entire planet. So we're trying to get it out of you. So the cute one there. Um, who is the greatest warrior on his planet, or or wherever he planet. is from? Um, can consume it, hopefully to its demise. These are not good things. It is not a good thing to have I mean, something attached but, to you. I mean, it's really not that bad. I mean, it it got me like a new car already. So I mean, obviously, it's not lying. Like, how did it get you a new car? I mean, I just came back home and it was here. I got, I mean, look, the, the title's in my name. All that stuff's done. I got the keys. Well, yeah, but how did that happen? I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to ask questions. Have you seen the car? But shouldn't yeah. you ask questions? Look, I just... You, you're not naive enough to think it's just giving you stuff for free, right? Well, no, I mean, it told me that it needs, like, live in my brain for a while but i mean look they don't pay me a lot there okay this is a really good opportunity yeah, see, right. well do you know what you're paying with you're paying with your entire body so like that is eventually going to take over you if you don't get rid of it out of your head and then you're going to be so here's here's the deal we either leave you with you'll that in your head existing mm, and you. you'll become the parasite or our friend eats you yes and I'm very hungry. You're dead either way. So either way, you're going to die unless you take that thing out of your head. I can't just make it leave. I don't just un dead. unsign the contract that you signed. I'm pretty sure it has to abide by that. I, uh, I don't. There wasn't like a physical contract. Just say three times, "Phantom, no phantoming," and it will leave. Phantom, no phantoming. Phantom, no phantoming. Phantom, no phantoming. Did it work? Well, it was worth a shot. Nope, it's still there. <laughs> um, is is my uh my my chip still working? I don't know. Why didn't you roll to take a powerful blow? Fudge. Oh, I mean, there has to be some level of control here, otherwise it wouldn't need to provide something to convince the host to let it stay, right? So either you're lying. Look, it just said that it needed to use me to build itself a new body, and in exchange for letting me do that, got me a new car. Yes, so you sold out your entire planet, species, and dimension for a primitive ground vehicle. I didn't vehicle. know that it was that bad. I thought that maybe it just, like, needed help coming back to life. Come to the hole that was once your exterior um, wall. Do we... Po point, yeah, point, point, this vehicle, point this vehicle out to me. 
Do we add <laughs> anything to conditions? Numbers? Yeah, okay. conditions. I don't think I have any conditions at the moment. Yet. <laughs> yeah. Able up, so it's just a straight up five. That's okay. good. Yeah, next chip is working as normal. Which which of these primitive vehicles is the one that you sold your people for? Oh, it's like it's in the parking garage. I'll just go eat a bunch of cars in the parking garage. <laughs> the squee takes off to go eat cars. I mean, it uh, takes probably thirty seconds. I come back with yeah, like a bit back. of a bumper hanging out. It's like yeah, the, ve it down. the vehicle has been destroyed. You are no longer bound to this creature. Expel it from yourself that we may, that we may destroy it. Did you just eat my car? Yes. I, well, I think it's... Is it gone? Like, Because that, that was the... I mean, I think because it already got me the car, that it's already done. Right? So you just ate my car. This is intolerable. Can I eat him now? No. I'm actually starting um, to consider it. Fade, if you can't access the thing to try to, I don't know, psychically remove it, maybe Deadlock can try to psychically remove it. Mimic her powers, but I don't have the chip blocking it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Okay, I don't know, but I'll attempt it. All right. Roll to directly engage a threat. Find the threat. Okay, that's good. Six, seven, eight. What is directly engage? Plus danger, seven, eight. Nine, ten, ten. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can pick two as you borrow Fate's dormant powers to enter psychic battle with the thing in this guy's head. Okay, well, resist and avoid their blows, number one. Yes. Uh, can I take something from them, that being their host? Perfect. All right. So you just come to like stand in front of this guy and he's just like, what's going on? And it's like, you're just naturally got to do this. Even though it doesn't actually. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, why? Are you put? And then he like eyes roll back a little bit and it's like very tense for a few moments as you're battling this thing mentally. Um, thankfully, you're able to avoid any psychic damage to yourself. Uh, and then since you are borrowing, Fade's powers, you can see this thing, like, come out from behind him, and initially it kind of looks like a shadowy, like, silhouette. Uh, it's got, like, a very long neck, very long arms, um, and then it shrinks back down into, like, a tiny little ball, and it's kind of just, like, writhing on the couch, and the guy's just looking around, and he's like, did you, did you get it on oh, my head? Oh, that hurt. Check on the couch. I will eat the couch. On the couch. <laughs> the guy like prints off the couch. <laughs> Squee bobbles up the couch along with the. Yeah, and, and the by the couch. way, it's not chomp chomp chew. It's the like, whole body opens up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, my couch, and you ate my car. I think he got it though. You don't see it. I don't see it anymore. I think I think Squee got it. All right, good job, team. Our work here uh, is done. Yeah, maybe next time think twice before you make any deals with the devil, huh? Yes. All right. This was not the parasite that we sensed at the facility. There are more. It is likely that the rest are compromised as well. Gotcha. And I'm still hungry. Oh, uh, uh, I made a couch in a car. How? D Dim no. You know what? It, it was multiple ground vehicles. It. Got it. Yep. Dim your little burp. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe a little toot. I hate it. All right, we, we need to go to the next place. Yes, quickly. You got off easy. <laughs> just, it was like his entire apartment in tatters. This apartment, no more Lost couch. the car, lost the couch. Like, his car is gone. Broken. It's been eaten by an alien. It's just like, they just told me I guess you could have asked for car insurance too. Right. <laughs> oh no, it's a hunter. He, his day is ruined. He's just curled up in a bathrobe. 
destroyed apartment. He's gonna have a fun time explaining this to the landlord. Yeah. And we're like, don't worry, the hero insurance will take care of it, even though that doesn't exist in the yeah, world. Yeah, he's right. like, what hero? What's hero insurance? <laughs> and we're like, bye. <laughs> Not bye. our problem. <laughs> All right, great. <clears throat> On to the next one. Yes. Um, I'll say without having to make you roll the next one, you know, there's nothing there or on the final apartment. It looks like the janitor was the only one that was affected. Um, when you reconvene at Alpha Industries with the others, um, they, they did find one um, on the doctor and were able to dispose of it. Um, did so you eat it? No, we didn't eat it. Ah. We no, shoved it through one of Cosmic's portals and sent it down into space. So we are certain that it's vanquished. You, you, you yeah. sent it through one of Cosmic's portals to potentially another area? You realize like, how big space is, right? It's very large. You realize how difficult it is for something that doesn't have any sort of warp drive or spaceship or thing that can make it move quickly. That thing's not going to be able to bother anything until the death of the universe. But still, in future, I suggest we eat them all. I, I, I I'm think I'm going to agree it. with Squee on this. Yes, you should. <laughs> it's fine. Moving on. <laughs> well, uh, I guess, w wait, so you guys found one too? Yes. Yes. It was not the but same was... one that we sensed at the facility. Similar. Oh, and hopefully we took care of the one that was here, and hopefully those were the only two. Uh, that's not good. It seems unlikely. Yeah. Mm. Probably fine. I think we should focus on our problem now. Right. Yeah, we do need to get you guys home. Um, so, I mean, it might take a minute, but Manifest is, like, really good with all the technology stuff. And, I mean, and we have Cosmic's portals, so she kind of knows a little bit about the rifts. Um, I guess we can have... I'll try to go find that little girl. Maybe she can send you back if we can track her down. Easy enough to do in yes. a city of hundreds of thousands of people. We should Don't track her down it. and and defeat her in single battle. Then she'll be forced to return us to our rightful place. Also, do you have Quangax? What okay, is just say no. That? Don't don't inquire. If you don't know what it is, chances it's, are you don't well, have it. Just say no. It's a rare substance used to power dimension drives. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. This earth is as bad as the one that I found myself wrecked on. Yeah, sorry. Well, and she kind of pauses for a second. She's like, well, actually, I mean, you can try to dig through my ship. Uh, it's just in the shed at our house, and you guys probably need somewhere to stay until we can get you home. Yes, I will salvage your ship. Yeah, that's fine. I'm not using it anymore. Um, yeah, why don't why don't you guys come home with me in heat log? We've got a couple spare bedrooms we can put you up in until we can figure out what we need to do to get you home, and then we can keep an eye out for any more of those things. Yes. Do you have kibble? We can get kibble. Yes, you must. Yes, right. Of course. <laughs> Great. Cough up a rearview mirror. I'm not gonna ask why you made a car. It was many Great. cars. As 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 an aside, fate is going to say to to fault line. He's eating the really like mid level like I'ms kind of stuff. If you have something like that similar here, it can't have grains in it. It can't have corn in it. It's got a very first thing has to say meat of some sort. 
Otherwise, he will kill us all with his noxious backside. It's just kind of like, like, okay, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I literally just ate like 10 car batteries, but it's fine. Yeah, it, she's like, it's already going to be bad. Believe me, I know. I I know flu feuds. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, you guys going to do anything else at Alpha Industries? Uh, Tilly Manifest has probably been talking very excitedly with you and like asking how you were built, how your systems work, how all of the technology came to be, like full on geeky out. Yeah, um, I'll be sure to show her lots of cool diagrams and yes, make sure they're 3D projected and so on. Uh, Deadlock Vengeance thinks that your helmet is awesome, so he's probably talking costume design with you. Uh, and then uh, Heatwalk probably approaches residents to like compliment your hair and then like ask if you guys are going to need anything since you'll be staying with them. Like, do you have any preferences on snacks or uh, whatever else teenagers need? Usually Cosmic Brownies. Do you have Cosmic Brownies here? Yes. That seems to be the team favorite. <laughs> I pull out a copy of my rider um, that I carry with me. Copy. On all occasions, just hand that over. Okay, <laughs> just look at it. Okay. Your 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 detailed instructions for craft services. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, I think I know what some of this is. Cool. I'll uh, I'll swing by the the store and grab some. Uh, and then I just go. Kibble. She'll need a coffee machine. Oh, we have a coffee machine, but that is she. Like, who do you think we are? <laughs> People that don't drink coffee. Uh, and I'm like, because I didn't drink coffee, remember? Yeah, I was like, no, I mean, defensively, we just, we have a coffee machine. We, sorry. Uh, I don't, yeah, but he won't know that I don't drink coffee. I'm like, yeah, but like the look you give him, he's like, oh, the, uh, like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he's backtracking very hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, coffee, coffee is essential. Yes. Always. Uh, it really, I, mean, I, I find something that, that, like, that this is a teen, teen, these are teenagers on coffee. He teenagers. Was, he's like, oh, but they don't, teenagers drink coffee, right? I don't have and any teenagers. None of that half cap crap either, full cap or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he like I makes a note black. like don't get decaf <laughs> and yes we can taste the difference <laughs> <laughs> test to see if they can taste the difference <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he's like okay great uh, cool uh, and he'll look at fault line and he's like I'll see you at home I'm gonna go grab dinner and snacks and smoothie supplies um, Michael said that he's he's still here. But oh yeah, I'm he's... here. Okay, his camera is taking a nap. Nap. That's fine. Um, all right. Uh, so if there's nothing else that anybody is doing, uh, fault line will take you to her car, take you guys back to her home. Uh, it's like a nice, modest size house in the suburbs. Nothing super fancy or anything like that, but just a quiet little area. Um, there is a shed out back that we can go investigate that has ship in it. Um, and I think that he might find one of the components that he'll need for his dimension drive in there. Ooh, excellent. Um, so there's that. Uh, fault line will like kind of leave you guys for a second, go get changed out of her hero costume and come back she looks more human when she comes back very visibly less obviously alien um and she's like okay well let me show you guys to the guest rooms um do you guys mind bunking up or should i have uh i think the couch okay because i can have harlow grab you guys like an air mattress or sleeping bags or 
whatever else. Uh, and she'll look at Tilly and be like, do you need like a like a cord? <laughs> like a USB-C yes, or something? that would probably be good. Yeah, let me see if we have any that'll fit. <laughs> I can make it work. Okay. <laughs> she probably has one somewhere that you just pull out. Well, I mean, wall. they're probably different here, but I can yeah, that's true. I, or modify it. She'll just kind of point you in the direction of, like, the, the typical kitchen junk drawer that's just full of ferrying wires because everything has a different size charger. Um, oh. I can't see it. Keep talking. <laughs> and, uh, scared. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um... So then she'll take a uh, deadlock residence and fade to there are two guest rooms. Um, one of them just has like a single bed. The other has a queen bed. Um, and then she'll point you to where the bathroom is. She's like, I'll see if Harlo can grab you guys different clothes. I'm guessing you don't want to sleep in the same things. Uh, is anything else you guys need are you good are you good i mean do you need to talk you guys kind of just like jump dimensions this is pretty normal for us honestly at this point okay we just... were in a pocket dimension earlier and this is way better than that thing how old are you guys i'm six months old or so what? Yes, I am three years old. You know, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. That's that's allowed. I'm I'm sixteen. So you guys are still like teenager teenagers, and yeah. you're running around as superheroes. I was trained by a superhero, so I know it's not like I don't know what I'm doing. It's fairly common for teenagers to do superhero activities if they we have, have special abilities. Okay, that's we have like a superhero school, right? Okay, hmm. Yes, Earthlings and their we home did. dimension are incredibly weak, but they seem to be stronger than those here. We 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 get to uh, we we still have like some of the normal things like math, English, history. For some reason, they still want us to know history of of the countries that we exist around. Um, for some reason, for good reason. <laughs> Yeah, face like school sucks. <laughs> yeah, she she, she she gets good grades, but she doesn't care for it. Um, yeah, you get an inter interdimensional high five from Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I was. Gonna I'm sorry, I was just gonna comment on. Uh, I was gonna comment to them like, hey, it's unusual that there are so few superhero teams here in Halcyon, actually, as compared to the number that we have in our city. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still, like, people with powers and stuff like that, but I mean, the only real massive threat that this place has faced was when the Phantoms came back with me when I crash-landed here seven years ago. Yeah, we have invasions on, practically on the weekly, so this is nothing for us. Yeah, this isn't common for Earth. I mean, you still have, like, you know, your low-level guys that are, you know, going out stealing and mugging people and yeah, street that level. sort of thing. Yeah, you should, street level, but, I mean, there's not really a lot of... With? Uh, yeah, there's not a lot of big threats. I mean, we've spent the last several years not having to worry about it. I mean, me and Harlow retired after we beat the Phantoms back the first time, so we weren't expecting to ever be heroes again. But, uh... Nice. I mean, uh, I guess it's different not having been from Earth, but you get used to it. But, uh, yeah, you guys get settled. Uh, you can call me Lila. 
and if you guys see I'm Lala. Anything... Oh, really? That's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Lila and Lala. Oh. That's great. <laughs> great. Well, yeah. If you need anything, just holler. Um, Harlow should be back soon from the store. We'll get dinner made. You guys can eat, rest up, and uh, then we can check with Manifest tomorrow and see how things are are going on getting you guys back home. Faye is going to politely excuse herself to finally go take care of the, the vomit that she's been holding back from the interdimensional travel. It's it's coming up. It may not be much, but it's going to be loud and noisy. <laughs> there, there will be like some like anti-nausea medication outside the door and like a blanket. Just, like, just let you know, like, I hope you feel better. Um, so, so Deadlock, he, he's sleeping where? I'm sleeping on the couch. Sleeping on I've the been couch. trying to sleep anywhere, so I could literally sleep on the floor. It doesn't matter. Oh. So there's a queen bed and a single bed. Um... Squee! <laughs> Squee in the backyard poking his head out from the, the scrap pile that was Fault Line Ship. He's not listening! I wonder where he'll sleep. Okay, well, I'll just take myself into the queen bedroom then and assume that because it's slightly bigger, Tilly might like boot herself up in the corner and Squee might, like, curl up on the bed to you. And then if somebody else decides they want to come in, there's room, but... Yeah, Squee um... has just wrecked the backyard. Yeah. Just painted it. And then just, like, <laughs> gone in and, and, and climbed into the very middle of the queen bed, so you'll have to scooch him out of the way. Oh. Because he, <laughs> he deserves the biggest bed, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's a great warrior. Yes. <laughs> It's also the fiercest looking one because it's got like a, a nice like bright pink fluffy blanket on it. Yes. Oh, and so I say, oh, Squee, I did some research and it's customary in this universe. Right, Tilly? No, look, look, look. That um, the greatest warrior is always in the right hand corner of the bed. Ah, uh, yes. Ready that to, is the space. Ready saved. to spring into action. Exactly. Should, like, see how you're your closest yes. to the door? Yes, yes. Like, see, like, that's the space reserved for the greatest warrior because they have to, you know, be there to tackle the greatest threat yes. should it come in. Protect mm. the puny earthlings, yes. Yeah, exactly. This is most and I'm very, I'm very puny compared to you. It is true. All right. Um, so I, I I just rolled again for the chip to see if it's still working. Um, that was a ten. Oh. <laughs> All right. Great. <laughs> right. Rolled again of your own volition. Yeah, I just decided that you're gonna. It's fate. Just like, like, like. What was she doing to try to like? Was she trying to use her powers to see if they? We're back. She she'll like she'll test a little bit just to make sure that the chip is still working and that she doesn't need to go, hey Tilly, can you mess with it again? So it's well, like... maybe they shouldn't have messed with it, but it's fine. Um yeah. all right. Wow. So I think this is where we'll wrap it up. So we will see Harlow pulling into the driveway and like getting out bags of groceries and like bags full of random clothes that he's like, I think this is what teenage girls wear. I don't know what I'm doing. Um <laughs> <laughs> so he's like carrying them into the house, fade from the bathroom, just starts screaming, screaming. as waves and waves of all of these people's consciousness come racing in and then the chip will kind of spasm and freak out and there will be a shock and you will be not unconscious. <laughs> right. So we're going to go ahead 
and definitely mark afraid for <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, like, the entire house kind of shakes a little bit, and, like, uh, Harlow and Lila will get Fade and put her on a bed and tuck her in, make sure she's comfortable, make dinner for everybody else, and then send you guys off to bed. Um, or to do whatever you want. Like, they're not going to like be like, we're your parents, you have to do this. But they're like, yeah, you go to bed, here's the TV, here's the remote, here's the VHS DVD player. Uh, yeah, can and I ask... <laughs> yeah, can I ask Lila if she has any children's stories? Um, sure. <laughs> I like, read Grey a nighttime, a bedtime story about a great warrior. Yes. Um, called Princess Freckle Stars. Star Freckles. Oddly yes, enough, she does have freckles. like a... <laughs> yeah, perfect. And it's about a beautiful little girl, okay, warrior, whose freckles um, change a grey world that is lacking, lacking in colour and... Uh, it creates stars that then pour out paint and uh, add color to the world and make it better. Yes. And that is the warrior story that I read to Scree. Scree falls asleep, time. but the legs keep twitching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's chasing something. And then he goes, right. <laughs> like nomming on the bedpost. <laughs> yeah, right. Just eats the blanket. Yeah. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> yeah, Lila took out anything important that was in the bedroom that squeaks. Yes. <laughs> um, she just hopes that he doesn't eat you. And I just curl my feet up a bit away from him. <laughs> <laughs> he eats the blanket off of you in the middle of the night. Yeah. You just like wake up suddenly cold. And like, <laughs> like oh, no. it's not worth it. <laughs> Tilly made me a light blanket. <laughs> a light blanket, Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> I've marked afraid and insecure for when she wakes up, um, because that's exactly how she's going to be feeling, um, along with having probably, like, the worst telepathic hangover headache that any one person could experience. It's like that hangover that you get when you know you drank too much and didn't drink enough water. It's that, but amplified. I think it's a little bit dulled. Um, Lila will actually stay in the room with you through the night okay. and use her own abilities to kind of help soothe yours over so that it's not so overwhelming. Okay. Um, and then in the morning, she will probably sit with you and kind of explain some of the techniques that her people use to help with their own telepathic powers and how to control them. Um, so she will be there to help with that. She will probably, if well, she doesn't know, but if you wanted to ask Tilly for help with the chip again, you can also do that. Yeah, um, that would probably happen, you know, in in the morning after episode. Um, but yeah, she okay. she's gonna she's gonna be kind of afraid. Like, and I'm I'm certain that you know the rest of her team is is aware of what happened. Um, considering there was. Shuttering of the entire house. <laughs> well, and Harlow and Lila like dragging you out of the bathroom where you passed out yeah. because your chip freaked out. Um, yep. All right, great. So everybody gets settled in for bed and we will kind of pan out from the house. It's a wonderfully beautiful night. I mean, the stars are mostly blocked out from light pollution, but the city is glowing. Things are peaceful. There are cars driving by. Nothing like super loud anything like that. Um, and we will end on a shot of Alpha Industries and kind of zoom in into the office where Manifest is working. Um, she has a bunch of gadgets spread out, uh, blueprints all over the table. Um, and we can see a shadow standing behind her and looking over her shoulder. And that's where we'll leave off. You're doing the session stuff. Dun dun yes. dun. Yeah. <laughs> spooky, spooky, spooky. Be her next episode. <laughs>
All right. Uh, okay, let's do end of session stuff uh, and tell everybody who you are, where they can find you if they can, and any other important announcement stuff. Uh, I'll start us off. Can, I'm 98 Tuffla for Tough Tough Corkleton, some other variety nickname, also a variety streamer. I have been your narrator, and we will be back next Sunday for the conclusion because we're doing doing two sessions. So hopefully we can wrap it up next time with a, a neat little bow. Um, all right, and go SJ. SJ or SJ underscore sidekick. I do not stream, but I'm here a lot. Uh, I let's see, end of session. So it's either grow closer to the team, grow into your own image of yourself, or grow away from the team. I don't really feel like I grew away from the team or really into my own image of myself this session. Uh, I don't really feel like I did anything, but uh, <laughs> I guess closer to the team, because at least we were a team. You know, we didn't split off into different directions and everything. Explain who made Same. me feel welcome. Uh, I mean, Residents gave you that wonderful hug. Yeah, did. I did. You had the wonderful <laughs> hug. We played a little knots and crosses. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so sure, we'll go with Res. And we had a look. I know we had a shared look. We did, yeah, for the baby. Yep. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> uh, so I think you already have influence over me, so you can shift my labels. <laughs> Oh, I did hit my potential, though. You can carry on, can't you, while I look at labels? Yeah, good. Uh, yeah. So... Um... I'm the original Zodi. I play Fade. Uh, I don't stream anymore. Um, yeah, you can, you can find me here most times when I have been summoned. Uh, if you need me or need to reach me, you can usually just at me in the Discord. Um, and most times I'll answer. Um, let's see. I think I'm also going to go with uh, grew closer to the team because we did work together. Um, as for who made me feel welcomed, <laughs> <Squish. laughs> yeah, it was. It was probably be. How is this? Please, please. <laughs> Oh, was like turning you off the whole time, like was yeah. undermining you the whole time. Yeah. Tilly really messed with your chip. Tilly helped you with the chip. That's that true. probably That's something true. Fade expects this kind of behavior. Like Fade feels this like, well, I have to take care of this poor little creature, and this poor little creature's like, no. <laughs> What are you talking about? No, you stupid, stupid simpleton. <laughs> I am taking care of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he's basically serpent. like her, her emotional support alien. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tilly definitely helped a lot in in you know making her feel you know part of the team because she she had a technical problem and and you know tech support helped. Um Tilly already has influence, and I'm leaving the conditions where they are for next time, so I will take a yeah. potential. All right. uh, since since I have influence over you, I'm going to shift those labels. Hey, hey, you know what? I'm going to move your danger up. <laughs> no reason. No reason. <laughs> no reason, but it's not minus two anymore, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm gonna bring your mundane down. That's cool. Yeah, it feels like something has changed alien. recently. <laughs> yes. Do you have to shift their labels? That's my question. As a player, do you uh, have to do it? Yeah, I think... because it's them 
it's how you see them and yeah so but i'm just looking at of them influences make there. make deadlock works at all of the skills move it down you know you <laughs> want to no, but you know when you're like, I don't see, I definitely don't see them as more freak, more danger, more savior. I don't see them. They're definitely not more mundane. They're a bit I don't more know. She was very mundane in this. Yeah. The only hey, time I took out, out I the shadow boring by myself. Boring can be you. mundane. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe no. They were more boring as impasse than they are as deadlock. I think that looks way more interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So shall I move? To follow the rules. Shall I move Freak up because of them doing the the telekinesis? The, the yeah. 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 You can move Superior down if you want because I don't really. I've stopped yeah, trying you to be the leader. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. So I moved Freak up and Superior down. Correct. That uh, works. All right. Tell us about you, Reggie. Um, I would agree with SJ that it's kind of like, I don't really feel like I did any of those things. So the one I would lean more towards is the... Um, uh, you and Squee like had vision. quite a bit of a bonding sesh. Yeah, vision at uh, the... Yeah, the team, more to the team. And I would say that, yeah, today I'm going to give influence to Squee. Yay. Um, because Squee and I spent a lot of <laughs> time together. Yes. And I think it would make sense that I give influence <laughs> because I think I think Squee is pretty fucking cool. Well, sorry for my language, but I think uh, Squee is quite cool. So, yeah. I don't know what you, you just takes Richie's, influence, right? Yeah. And, she's falling yeah. into the cute trap. <laughs> Not the cute Change. trap. I don't, nah, I don't think they're cute. I think they're cool. That's yeah. different. I think they're like, I appreciate the fact that they can fly and the fact that their cuteness <laughs> lures people into a false sense of security. Yes. And I like the fact that they'll get happily get in a harness um, right. and, you know, <laughs> do stuff like that. Yep. And I did not already have uh, influence over you, so no moving of anything. No. You you can either clear a condition or mark potential. Yeah, I didn't have any conditions, so I marked potential. Cool. Sweet. All right. Uh, Mish. All right. I'm Misha underscore lesson three or uh, at Misha Weha on Twitter. That's Misha with a W-E-H-A at the end. Um, I think just the next time you'll see me here is next week. As far as the uh, end of game question. I think I grew closer to the team. Uh, they're looking at me like a leader. I have to make important decisions. Um, I'll fail them all, but I'll probably put. Uh, I was thinking dead like I might put Squee because I think we vibe in the way that I'm always very serious, and uh, that works well with being friendly. And I think I got the rules down. There were a lot of them. I've got them memorized. No one to work with them. It'll work out. Uh, technically, I think you already have influence over me because everyone gets influence over me. Ah, uh, but I'm new. Oh, it doesn't always just happen mm -mm. when you show yeah, up? Think, okay. Yeah. Fair. Then, behold, influence. Yay. <laughs> all right. And squee. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm uh, Michael or Zero or Zero Daylight. Uh, you can catch me here. Uh, next time will be next Saturday when we will kick off um, at the right hand or in the path, which is our world of darkness. Uh, that'll, I think that'll be a two part. We had to push the start from this past weekend. So, uh, and then that's on Saturday, and then on Sunday, uh, back for the conclusion of of our fifth issue of Teen Justice Academy. Uh, and Squee uh, definitely grew closer to the team, uh, and definitely it was because of Residence and the um, Residence really gets Squee. With the whole like pretty pretty princess <laughs> stuff, so yeah, for sure. Perfect. So, I read it. Red like a giant story. warning sign. So yeah, <laughs> right. I'm probably the scariest the looking. <laughs> Yo, for sure, for sure. The scariest looking of the group. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, so cool. Yeah. Um, uh, and so that that means that you're the only person who has influence over me because I am. Yay! Yeah. So cool. Uh, Wait till you see Tilly's rainbow hair. That's really scary. Oh, it's true. If you could just yeah, uh, that's true. 
You can Deadlock manifest that stuff. Most boring person on the team. Deadlock, <laughs> wait, yeah, no, totally different yeah. direction with the new costume. Supposed to be all yeah. yeah, Deadlock is adorable. <laughs> it's like that's inappropriate. The only thing I've got going for me is like the rainbow highlights. Mm -hmm. yeah. You need to put some pom poms on that, some glitter. <laughs> then it would be truly frightening. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'll do that and then I'll mark potential. Sweet. All right. All right. Well, uh, we should probably figure out someone to go I say Mac hi to. Up. Mac is up. Oh. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I did forget. Up. I was going to mention that I did get potential this game. So I added a move from another playbook, the brain scientific insight into like networks to try to like codify me hacking all networks all the time anyway. Yes. All right. Beautiful. Cool. I think we have to be aware of our team moves as well because I forgot loads about them. And if you read them, a lot of the time we have shared secrets and weak weaknesses and stuff. Yeah, we haven't. And, uh, we I don't think we've ever done that. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll learn to play this game someday. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Work? Awesome. Cool. Uh, so, well, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, come back and join us uh, again on Saturday and then again on Sunday for the conclusion of this. Thanks, Tough, for running. Thanks, everyone, for coming and playing. Thanks, everyone, in chat for watching. And we will see you all again soon. Say hi to Meg. Give her all the love. Bye, everybody. Bye.